I decided to switch the music up on you guys, see if you're paying attention. <laughs> I felt I like it. it was back at the club. <laughs> <laughs> oot, oot. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only, Mark Sargent. Hi. Welcome, Mark. <laughs> Thank you guys for having me. And by the way, the question you were asking me just before we came on air, am I a cheesehead? Uh, no, but I have a special relationship with that state. Uh, one, my family's from there, from from Cochrane, Wisconsin. And I dated a girl from Milwaukee for like five years, and I'm a huge, oh, I was a huge fan of uh, Brett Favre, believe it or not, okay, for yeah. uh, a number of years, yeah. mostly because of John Madden's love affair with him. I love the fact that John <laughs> Madden, you know, they made jokes about him all the time, and John Madden's like, oh, Brett Favre, because, you know, he could walk on water, and, and so. Right, he was good. He was good. He was a gunslinger. Yeah. I, and I love the fact, I'll, I'll give you a quick uh, athlete athletic story where you know when he left green bay i don't blame him look Aaron, everyone knew aaron Rodgers was gonna be good right and brent wasn't leaving and so they threw him out but in this contract they said you can't play for anyone in our league for at least a year mm -hmm. for obvious reasons because you're gonna come back and you're gonna want some revenge right? right and so he went to new york what new york for a year and they came straight back to minnesota and he lit the packers freaking mm -hmm. up <laughs> just yeah. lit him up right i, I love you that. Got that revenge he did and it was sweet and and again it shows you what what uh what athletes can do when they're really motivated you know it's like it's, i'm no oh no we're we're gonna do this yeah not just athletes but champions you yes know, there's, champions there's difference. yeah so when when anyone says oh who's the big the the best quarterback in in football i don't immediately jump on tom brady because of the, of all the super bowl wins i just don't yeah, right. it's like, look, I it's saw his a different game too. It's just yeah. so different. They don't get hit. They don't. They don't. Exactly. He played. He got lucky because he got to extend his career because they realized that quarterbacks, really good quarterbacks, like directors in Hollywood, really good quarterbacks are so rare that they are a really expensive commodity. You cannot replace them. It's like a freaking engine in your car. And um, so, so you know you're paying these guys what 100 million dollar contracts and you can't get them hurt therefore you have yeah. to change the rules you can't have them going down not when you got yeah. some 330 pound bruisers coming after him every <laughs> single right. play yeah. and that's they, why they pass the hell out of the ball now because they can they can yeah. just sit back there and, and, and take all day yeah you know and if yeah. someone gets too close to them they get a flag so yeah yeah so when when he when he left the patriots and then you know, went to Green Bay or went to Tampa Bay, and people said he went to Tampa Bay just because the initials were his initials. I was going, oh god, that can't be true. Yeah. Uh, and, and then wins a title. I'm going, okay. I mean, it, let's put it this way: when it comes to football, watch any given Sunday, directed by Oliver Stone. Uh, it'll give you some insights. You know, the as Mark Twain would say, never let the let the truth get in the way of a good story. There's the, when money gets up to a certain level, there's always going to be some theater. The best teams don't always win. It's the teams that the people want to see win. They win. Correct. And also, there he picked that. He wouldn't. He didn't want to be in the AFC because it was going to be stronger. He yeah. pretty much hand selected that. Like they had yeah. up and coming. They had a great defense, great receivers. Yeah, it, it was a no brainer. Yeah. So and if it, you're going to play it, in the last few years, you know, go go there, and it worked yeah. out. And yeah. Now they can't keep him. I mean, Hollywood would love to make him an actor, and he really can't act. So, uh, you know, they, but he's in, he's in the tabloids all the time now, still. Yeah. And it's like, oh yeah. no, he's the guy. Yeah, every, yeah, any you remember, he didn't want to be the guy. He was like, remember Peyton Manning was the first guy that really got big. And then Tom Brady, they asked him and he's like, no, I don't want to be that guy. I just want to be yeah. the quarterback. And then I think his agent got a hold of him and said, Hey man, you can, you can turn this into something. And, and that's what he did. The next thing you know, it was just everywhere. Don't get me started on, on Peyton Manning because I was in Denver when, um, uh, when he came there, and you know that he, who he replaced when he came there, which right? Was, which was Tim Tebow, yeah. And, yeah. and that goes into a whole other thing. We can, spend, <laughs> we can spend some time on. Anyway, not a Florida fan. The what? Not a, a Florida Gators fan. No, oh, no, God, no, no. Actually, no. I no. I am a Tim Tebow fan because he was playing at a level which delved into, which tapped into the superstitions of a lot of people. And what and the, the league had to get rid of him. I mean, he's the only quarterback in history to win a playoff game, and then the very next season he didn't have a job. Right. right? Yeah. To, to where and and the reason was is be, a lot of people didn't know this. Like Cam, that was Cam Newton's rookie season. I'm, I'm sure he broke a whole bunch of records. Tom Brady broke a bunch of records. Aaron Rodgers bunch, broke a bunch, bunch of records that season. Nobody cared. 
Mm-hmm. All anyone cared about was did Tim Tebow pull out some sort of fourth quarter win? Yeah. And as you know, he was the number one selling jersey. And look, if I was running the league, it's like, yeah, so there's 32 teams in this league. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. as much as we like this kid, we can't have him being elevated to the state, you know, of you know, where he can start resurrecting people. Yeah, and do you think do you think some of that had to do with his religion? He was pretty religious. Part, part and, of it, yes, but part yeah. of it, but most of it was money. And, and look, and and Peyton Manning, he would. The rumor was that when he came to Denver, he's like, "Yeah, he will not be my backup quarterback. I do not want to hear them chanting his name on the sidelines if I have a bad game. I don't yeah. want to hear that crap." And For so sure. it's like, nope. And and again, the 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 proof was this. Sorry, I don't want to drag this out because I know it's like it's, this is not a sports show. This is a football podcast. Yeah, now. it's a football podcast. <laughs> it's but, a flat but, Earth but football what, podcast. What, what got me was is that he, when he was let go from Denver, nobody would pick him up, right? And he, I mean, like Florida, I mean Jacksonville. What are you kidding me? He would sell out any any team in Florida. And he had several to choose from. He could have gone to any team in Florida and just lit it up. And the end, and the NFL is like, nope. I mean, can you imagine what awkward phone calls the you know the Goodell calling the the heads of those three or four teams down there and saying, yeah. So I know you want to, you're not. Right, <laughs> so, right. Anyway, well, you know what's about interesting this. about Peyton Manning is my Chiefs, yeah, wanted him. They offered him the spot, and he he didn't think they'd be good enough. So he turned them down and went to Denver because he thought they had a better yeah. better chance. Obviously, they did, but yeah. you know we don't regret it because we got Mahomes and yeah. And Peyton got out the at the right time. If you believe in conspiracies, you know that whole Brady Peyton. We can who knew that those were the guys that controlled the inflation level of the footballs for the league. <laughs> they were the ones that wrote that wrote the policies. The really the quarterbacks really, and and when. Um, you know, it, Peyton Manning retires before the investigation starts. It's like, okay, we're not going to worry about him anymore. And then um, Tom Brady's attorney says, yeah, erase your phone right now. It doesn't matter what anyone says. Erase your freaking phone. Just yeah. torch it. And, <laughs> they it. So and that much, was it. And yeah. then the, the, the deflate gate was over just like that. And so, they, ladies they, and gentlemen, those of you who don't know, uh, Mark <laughs> Sargent is a professional football uh, analyst. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no. No, I haven't been I love it. Anything. I'm sorry. Yes, I, I do. Sorry, I, I am into flat earth. It just happened to be that that one of our hosts here <laughs> was wearing a Kansas City Chiefs hat, and I had to make a comment. And, and the were... Chiefs play on flat football field on <laughs> flat earth. Yes, they do, which is also a great kind of like a basketball court. You know, the football fields are flat, and you you know you, you can you can test this yourself if you have Conspiracy. a football. Conspiracy. Yeah, it can spirit. Well, it's not, I mean, no, it's just you, you put a camera in one end zone, you know, put it on the ground, and then you walk to the other end zone and you watch the footage when you, after you get it back and you see what happens, you start to set over that field. You know, you start disappearing from the ground, you know, from the, the feet up. And it's like, why does that happen? It's like, well, it's not because of the, uh, the curvature of the earth. Let's put it that way. So before well, we know, dive too deep, a slope, right? Yeah. It kind of goes up in the middle and it kind of slopes off to the side. Well, I mean, there's some drainage yeah. stuff, sure, but but uh, but, but before anyway. <laughs> before we go too deep, yeah, uh, I think we've covered the fact that you. Uh, I like to call you the flat Earth theorist. Yes. Um, yes. Th- I've interviewed you before, and and just for the listeners, I just want to say out front, and I think this is important to say that. I don't believe that the earth is flat. However, I, every time we have talked, I have really enjoyed our conversations. Um, there, there will be no, uh, there will be no disrespect from, from comment or, or well, if they do, if it's funny, maybe we'll accept it. But, uh, <laughs> my, my point is, is that with that being said, my major question for you is, yep. Is there any subject that you don't have such a working knowledge on? I mean, it's like everything we bring up, man, you just bam, bam, bam. (laughs) Um, I know a little about a lot. Um, There are some things like, like when you just said that, I'd be like, well, I don't know much about fashion, but I, (laughs) clearly for very various reasons. But at the same time, I could, there are, I remember little aesthetic things. So I could, I could throw out some little aesthetic little things about fashion. Now, <laughs> that being said, we're watching like the devil wears Prada, you know, with, uh, 
you know, there was a lot that went over my head, but but I, I kind of got the gist of it. No, there's, I, okay. Because I never got married or had kids. Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> that, that can be started. Uh, you want to, by the way, you want to watch an interesting interview, go to, there's a, a channel called, by a photographer called the, the Soft White Underbelly. Listen to the hour interview that he did of a divorce lawyer of 20 years. That's my OnlyFans page title. <laughs> what, the soft white underbelly? Yeah. <laughs> Good. Good one. Um, it's it's fascinating. I have I because I never got married or had kids, uh, I have an opinion. I, I got to spend a lot of time on the internet and I went down a lot of rabbit holes. So there's some things I'm I'm pretty good at. I mean, I have an opinion on just about every conspiracy you could think of. Uh, media sanctioned or not. And by that, I mean, uh, you know, there, there are obviously conspiracies that happen in the in the mainstream world, but they're not called conspiracies. They're either called scandals or if somebody dies, they're called tragedies. Uh, you know, where what you know, where three or more people are involved. But I mean, come on, the the legal world use convicts people of conspiracy all the time. And which was really interesting to me when all of a sudden the word conspiracy, turned into this fringe thing, you know, the, into the, the whole truther community. And what I mean by that is this, because uh, I have personal, personal knowledge of, of this. Uh, if you rob a bank, you are convicted of armed robbery, right? But you and two of your friends rob a bank, you're convicted twice. You're convicted once for robbing a bank and two, second time for conspiracy. You conspired with other people to rob the bank. It's a completely separate charge. It's like, oh no, you're going to get extra time because you want you thought it out so much. You brought other people in, and we're going to hit them too. And, Thank you, CIA, uh, for ruining that for putting yes. the uh, yeah. So the CIA came out and said, oh, the conspiracy now is this fringe word, and and the mainstream media never they are not allowed to use that word. It is they are allowed to use the word scandal, like Enron. Right. With remember when Enron ruined, found a, a loophole in the whole tax system and cheated everybody out. Of course, it also helped that they spent a million dollars a day to bribe one of the biggest accounting firms in the world. And they took the money because, well, it's a million dollars a day. Um, why not? But that's a scandal. Right. But anything like like the uh, like we'll just throw in like the Vegas shooting is considered a tragedy. Right. Or JFK mm. is considered a tragedy and stuff like that because somebody died. Anything other than those two things, you know, again, if the media doesn't put their stamp on it, it's considered a conspiracy. So, sorry, long story short, yeah, I, I know a lot about a bunch of stuff because I have long story short, the media sucks. Media yeah. sucks. Yeah. Media yeah. sucks. And, and if you stare at computers long enough, uh, you pick up a few things. So, you know, you're, you're talking about the con um, two convictions for uh, consp conspiring. Yeah. What do you think about right now? We got the whole, uh, the guy with the uh, capital capital riots got twenty two years. Oh. I think member of the proud was it? Yeah, the boy, that was the whole the whole insurrection thing, which you're supposed to be careful about if you're talking online about. Okay, that. well, but, you but know, I'll, I'm on I'll, about I, a I, thousand I, watch lists as it is. What's one more? I, I can. I, I'll be del <laughs> I'll be delicate, but everybody knows what we're talking about here. Uh, for me, that was a wonderfully set up operation in the term in terms that it got a whole bunch of people to show up with all so many cameras around dc and they got to tag everybody it's like they knew who was there right not only that by the way don't don't think well some people weren't on camera it's like no but everybody brought their phones <laughs> they knew where you were they knew everybody that was in that audience and then they singled out people to go after and then as far as the um uh, the the one girl you know dying supposedly from the single shot from from the guy the security guy there's a one there's some wonderful breakdowns I know you probably may or may not have seen them uh, if you don't I'll send it to you after the words which, after the fact which was brilliant I mean absolutely brilliant and I I'm a big believer in stats I love statistics I, I love you know how the numbers work out and it's like you're telling me in a room which was only guys this tiny little girl right <laughs> with the backpack punched through and she's the first over the barricade and she's the only one over the barricade and a, a single shot a fatal shot and i was like yeah I, lone gunman to me is one of the oldest stories in the book it is mm. it's absolutely brilliant and it has worked for, for years and years and years uh and i mean going before jfk you know there's but it's an easy thing because it's it's, it's a nice tidy way of of um, getting rid of things and i i, I forgot it's been a while since we've talked so i don't know what 
I mean, yeah, yeah, you may not, you know, believe in the whole flat earth enclosed world thing, but I'm sure because of what you guys do, I mean, you believe in certain that not everything that that the media says is uh, is is well, face value absolutely true. I'll put it to you this mean. way. Go ahead, Ryan. Well, I was going to say, like, I just think it's important to keep a, a realm of skepticism. You know, like you you have to question things, and I, spe- I especially think today with oh, yeah. everything we see that. You really can't rule anything out at this point. No, no, and don't forget the people that you know. I've still had. I love it when people say, "Well, there's no such thing as fake news." And I go, "Okay, really? Resolve these two sentences. Ready? Everything on CNN is absolutely true, and everything on Fox News is absolutely true. That's that's tough because both right. sides They're, absolutely yeah, accuse each other total, of just blatant uh, yeah, lies. Uh, opposition. Yeah, and and, 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 and it's not that I I believe because there's obviously things out there that. You know, I, I'm glad there's people like you that have your, your beliefs, and then I'm glad there's people that have different beliefs than me, and that's what makes it interesting. But I don't think you can really rule anything out. I mean, no, you know, you just can't, and no. it's good to hear hear other sides and then, you know, weigh them out and think them out and then form your own opinions, and that's how many, the way it should be. How many times have you looked at something? I mean, we've all done it where you look at something, it's like, well, it can't be that. Because that that true if it's true it's way it's that's wild, mm-hmm. and I've run into that many many times where you know the truth is often stri- you know stranger than fiction, the really weird stuff that's out there blows the movies away and and a lot of times they can't sure. even make movies about it. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I tell you, I spent over three decades in the military. Yeah, and with that being said. The government, I, you know what? I, I trust this table that I'm sitting in front of more than I trust the government. Uh, just well, the crap that I've seen in that time. Um, what, and I, I'll tell you what, you, you'll yeah. be surprised. That I've, I've kind of changed my views a little bit since the last time we talked with regards specifically to the moon landing. Oh, um, good. Oh, I, you mean since, I you believe mean since India landed on it? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it, you know, uh, everything I've seen, all the, because I, I like to keep an open mind. Um, yeah. I believe, I'm going to tell you that I believe we went, but I all the pictures and the video that's been published and put out there, I don't believe that was from the actual movie. It's questionable. Itself. There it you is. go. At the very yeah. least, you, you could say that. I mean, there's there's two two quick examples I want to give. One would be the, the, you know, the heavy metal band Rammstein. Or Romstein, or however you want to pronounce it. Yeah. Uh, they, they, <laughs> nine. They did <laughs> a. Um, correct. <laughs> they did a a video called "We're All Living in America," which which was a, a nice little nod to how the American media machine is everywhere. You know, Rome sent troops everywhere. We just send our shows everywhere, and and could people recognize our stuff based on? I mean, come on, Ronald McDonald's is recognized more than than Christ <laughs> in a lot of cases. Right. And so, but they, while they were doing it, they, they recreated for the video, the main set was the, the, the band members in astronaut suits playing on the moon and they recreated the Apollo color palette absolutely flawlessly. And all they did was went to an abandoned factory, visqueened all the, the light sources, put in four inches of ash, did a recreation of the, of the lander, and then, um, actually hired the, the clothing company that made the outer skin for the NASA suits. And they were playing, and I'm looking at it, I'm going, wow, that is that is so close. And I knew they were nodding. They knew full well what they were doing. Whereas, like, it's like, oh, yeah, it's all just a fun and games video, but we look what we can do, right, for a, a budget of, what, a couple hundred thousand dollars or, you know, $300,000 for a video. And NASA gets some, uh, what is it, over 70-something million dollars a day, which leads me to my other thing real quick, which is um, India, right? So India, if you guys missed it, anyone's listening, Uh, supposedly landed a probe on the moon, right? The Russians were there like three days before, supposedly tanked theirs, crashed theirs. So there's no footage of whatsoever, which is like, okay, so that's totally credible. You've got no footage of you. Oh yeah, we we crashed probe on moon. It's like, really? Got anything to back that up? No. Well, okay, fine. We'll take your word for it. But India lands one. That's not the part that insulted me. You know, and the graphics were straight out of, of 1996, you know, that, <laughs> that, that they were using, you know, just to show the simulation part. And they took like, five six still shots and then they shut it down just yesterday by the way they just turned it off they oh. said oh well it's, it's done in two weeks we, we put it to sleep and it's like 
what do you mean to put it to sleep? It's a solar powered probe. What, what, what do you mean? Two weeks and that's it? Just an even two weeks and you just turned it off? Oh, that's convenient. No, that the part that insulted me was they said, oh yeah, and we did it for $75 million. And it's like, and people don't understand military spending, which is $75 million. That's nothing, right? It's like, you might as well just said 50. There's no credibility in saying that you did a space program for $75 million. A single F-16 fighter without missiles is $63 million, right? Um, well, we just uh, gave $75 worth. million to Ukraine while you were talking about exactly, this. Exactly, exactly. A super yacht, a super yacht. You walk into a, a super yacht dealership and you give them $75 million, they'll just kick you out of the store. It's like, no, right. minimum, $200 million. You couldn't buy out LeBron's contract, the rest of his contract for $75 no million. Yeah. For what and it's worth, me... they got a couple of nice toilet seats and a hammer. Oh, it's just, it was just ridiculous. So anyway, I'm glad that, that, uh, that you question the validity of the, uh, the American uh, More and more every day. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, more it's, more it's, it's not good. Anyone that wants to look at it, just I won't I won't go after all the points, but the one you really should look at because it's out there, you can find it in, in two seconds, which is and again, people forget their physics when they're going through high school, which is um the shadows are intersecting. There's one light source yeah. on the moon. If you're on the moon, the, it's the sun, it's 93 million miles away. All the shadows should run absolutely parallel, they should never intersect, and all the shadows look like they've got studio lighting behind it. Which is multi, which is what you would do, right? You hire some stu you know, studio lighting people. And of course, they don't know physics. It's like, we really need this ship to be lit in a certain way. Can you get the floods over here? Right. And then all of a sudden, the next thing you know, the shadows are going in different directions. It's like, no, no. What's the thing with the, the crosshairs on the, oh. on the camera? Like they're in. Now, yeah, what? that was a little thing that most people don't get because now we don't have those anymore, which was the old film mm -hmm. photography thing, uh, really old back in the day. Uh, you had the, the markers on the lens. So you had the crosshairs on the lens. So every photo would have these, these, these crosshair marking points on them. And I don't know why they had them, maybe for reference points. But when they touched up the photos, <laughs> they... They went over the crosshairs in some cases. Yeah, and, yeah, they forgot like, that, right? It's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, and then even the flag, right? Because the flag is kind of straight, like oh, dude. Be... Or the space, the fact that the spacesuit defies the the one of the biggest laws of physics, which says that pressure cannot exist next to non-pressure without without some sort of barrier, and it's got to be a rigid barrier. We'll go to YouTube and say anything in a vacuum chamber. Just fill in the blank. Soda can, Stretch Armstrong. Uh, a volleyball, a football, whatever. They all just expand until they detonate, right? Correct me if I'm wrong. Is that Boyle's Law? Is it Boyle's Law? I think it is. I don't it know. It might be. I mean, it is one of the laws of thermodynamics, though, which is you can't... So basically, you can't have a vacuum next to a non-vacuum. And any submarine guy will tell you this. A vacuum next... A vacuum, the force of a vacuum or, or non-pressure is no joke, uh, which, which, again, Hollywood completely conditioned us that it doesn't even exist which is you get a hole in your spacecraft right you know micrometeor it's like oh you know you hear this pss, it's like oh we only got three minutes of air left somebody get a cork or some duct tape or something right <laughs> no any submarine guy or any deep sea uh, oil rig guy will tell you it's like no that hole's there it's over you're done in in a fraction of a second all the air in the room the air in your lungs you're probably going to get pinned to the wall or sucked out of the wall there's horrible accidents and it happens in a fraction of a second it's extremely violent but hollywood doesn't like that as the narrative hence mark twain's wonderful quote which i love so much which is never let the truth get in the way of a good story mm. i don't expect you to remember this but but i was a submariner and uh oh cool i, I tell you what i yeah. i used to i used to pull a vacuum on that sub every time we pulled in that liberty port with how fast my ass was out that hatch let me tell you <laughs> <laughs> gone son gone it it is it, it well the, the point people say why do you care about the vacuum so much because if you believe in the vacuum of space and our atmosphere is sitting right next to it i've, I've asked astrophysicists point blank young ones too Right, not the ones that are trying, not the cagey veterans that are trying to pull one over you. I go, I go. What happens at the edge of space? You know, where there's an atmosphere and then a vacuum. What happens? It's like, well, it's just not really doing much. It's not affecting much, right? It's just little particles. It's like barely touching. It's like a vacuum doesn't care. A vacuum's going after everything that's pressurized. It, and the the argument I I threw at people, uh, I'll use an Amazon reference for you. You take an Amazon box, you know, 
not I'm not sponsored by Amazon. But you take an Amazon box and you put some packing popcorn in the bottom of it. Make sure the little piece of tape holding it, right? You pick up the box. Fine. Packing popcorn doesn't go through the bottom of the box. Put the box down. Put a whole bunch of books on top of the packing popcorn. What do you think happens when you pick up that box? It just goes, Bruh! this punches right through. That's what should be happening at the edge of space. The vacuum should just rip off everything, going all the way down to the oceans and then take the oceans too. And it should be doing it instantly, and it doesn't. And everybody said the uh, the only argument that people throw at me, and they say, "Well, it's because of gravity." I go, "Really? Gravity? Gravity's?" And I go, "Okay, so bear with me. If you had a second floor of your building, and uh, you turned it into a small vacuum chamber, and you popped that valve, which was right above you, what's going to happen? The air is going to rush upstairs." I go, "You mean that gravity? The gravity that that couldn't keep the air in your room from going upstairs, but..." It, this very same gravity that's outside is going to keep everything hugged to this ball against the, the greatest vacuum ever. Well, gravity's still a theory. It is. It is. So, and, it's, and it's a very, again, it's a really convincing theory because things work. To, to, meaning, you know, I take this phone, right? I drop it. It falls. It's going to fall every single time. A million times I could drop it. A million times it's going to fall. However... It cannot be replicated in a lab. We don't have a way of creating anti-gravity, which you see in science fiction shows all the time. But uh, wait, there's yeah. more. Sorry. <laughs> yes. I just, uh, I'm, I'm getting ready to segue into what I really want to get into. Oh, okay, go wait, ahead, wait, please. Oh, well, I want I to say you, nor, nor can we create extra gravity or anything like that. Every scientist, every scientist that's worth his salt, that's an old Roman reference, by the way, uh, every scientist is worth his salt, will tell you it's like we don't know what gravity is we can only tell you what it does we can only tell you its symptoms and what and my argument is it's like yeah they uh, they say that gravity is a mag magical molecular for force that pulls things down to the center of a ball i say oh fine gravity is a mo mo magical molecular force that pulls down things just straight down on a flat earth for me it's no different and then you throw in density but it's a whole nother thing sorry wh where'd you want to get to <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, with with the uh, the the recent um, in the news with the whole UFO UAP whatever you want to call it, uh -huh. um, what are your thoughts on that? Now, here, I, I, Ryan and I have a little bet going on. I, I kind of oh, I had a guess on what what you're going to say, but okay. And I'm probably way off base, but uh, <clears throat> they're obviously all Chinese. That's, that is not my head. <laughs> what the balloon is. They're obviously, they're obviously all, no, that's an article, by the way, that came out recently, which is somebody is actually trying, it's getting no traction. It says all UFOs are probably Chinese. It's like, dude, how, Roswell, really? You're going to, you're going to explain Roswell when, when China was basically riding bicycles? Come on. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Seriously, they had no industry in, in the, in the yeah, 1940s. Like, yeah. Not like that. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, no, for me, uh, UFOs are, do I think they're real? First off, yes, I do. Uh, because I have, I've be, way before I got into Flat Earth, I was doing a lot of, uh, somebody, I watched a thing and somebody said, oh, hey, you want to see some UFOs, grab some night vision binoculars, you know, kind of like the, the heads, heads up displays for, for army, only they're, they're five power or 10 power or whatever. Uh, doesn't have to be gen two or gen three. Anyway. I w start watching the sky and it's like, wow, the sky is just freaking crawling with things. And they are absolutely not satellites. I've seen them do amazing gymnastics up there. And it's like, what? And no one can see them because the, you know, they don't make any noise. They're running off a unified field engine and uh, they don't have their lights on, which by the way, I love. And I think Steven Spielberg knows this too, which is, it's one of those little things that people just miss. It's like, by the way, UFOs run are like cars. They run just fine with their headlights off. Get it? <laughs> so they have right, a completely yeah. silent engine. They don't even have to cloak at night. And that's the point. It's like, oh yeah, they can run around all day because we only look up when we hear something, when we hear one of our really noisy airplanes. So do I think they are from Mars and Jupiter and Venus and stuff like that? No, no, I don't. Um, for obvious reasons, because I think Mars and Jupiter and Venus are just lights on top of a planetarium ceiling. But I think they're they're just older versions of us. Meaning, you remember, our own unbroken history only goes back, say, 5,000 years. So all those older civilizations, and if you want to quote ancient aliens, you can. I mean, you know, the sunken city is off of Japan, the sunken city is off of India. 
uh, which we don't know how old they are. The Bosnian pyramids, the real pyramids, Puma Punku, Machu Picchu, Bimini Road. Take, take your pick. There's so many out there. It's like, okay, these older civilizations, I think that they're just previous older versions of us who's flying around there. I think there are rules that once civilization reaches a certain point, they have to move on. No different than a senior class. Right. What happens to us after 5,000 years? Come on, we're, we're running the end. We're, we're running on fumes right now. Everybody knows the narrative is changing and we're getting reaching a stage now. It's like everything looks like it's going to, you know, you know, slowly, slowly. And then all at once that that whole thing. So but that's who I, who I think they, they are. And I, I think they, there's rules that they have to follow. Uh, you want to look up the, the greatest UFO. I don't know if I mentioned this the last time I was talking to you. Um, the greatest UFO sighting in history is not Roswell. It's not 1899 Aurora, Texas. It's not 1930s Germany. It is 1500s. Um, yeah, 1561 Nuremberg, Germany. It's Damn. it's brilliant. Yeah, it, I remember you bringing that up last yeah. time. It's yep. it, again, it's got its own wiki page. It is. It was drawn because there was no photography back then, and it was this it raises so many. It raised so many questions. Even ancient aliens brought it up, but they left out the the third faction that showed up, the the giant black angular craft that chased off the other two, because obviously the other two were doing something above Nuremberg that they weren't supposed to be doing. It's like. What sort of hierarchy are we looking at here? And so I think there's a prime directive that's in, that's involved. Meaning, so where do you think they come from? Uh, you mean where where do they live when they're not? Yeah, yeah I mean, when they're not because, bothering us, right? <laughs> when they're not picking off campers and rowboaters and <laughs> and and drunk guys, you know, in the middle of nowhere. And most um, importantly, where can I get probed? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, never mind. well, that's you, just you got that on the, in the Navy, buddy. Oh, sorry. I forgot. <laughs> if, if you want, uh, you know, um, as far as how many different factions there are, I don't know. Um, but do I think I, I think most of them, I mean, you could go one of two ways. Well, one of three ways, either they're living outside of the, the dome, you know, if it's a flat world or even a globe, you know, they're living outside of here. Um, which I doubt because I think it'd probably be more fun to have them in. They're probably subterranean. Just about every story I've ever heard of them landing or people, it's like, okay, where, where is this thing going? It's either going into a cave, it's going into the water, <clears throat> it's going into a, a section of the woods and it doesn't come out, but it's landing somewhere. And it's like, well, it's not, it's, it's obvious we don't have hidden cities. It's not like, um, oh, what was that Black Panther? What, it's not Wakanda. Let's put it that way. I don't. I don't think they have cloaked cities lying around. But do I think they're subterranean? Sure. Why not? Uh, you know, it doesn't take much. The, think about how little real estate we actually need to survive. Most of our civilization lives between sea level and one mile up, right? So if you even had a cave that was, I don't know, two hundred miles wide and fifty miles high, that's way more room. I mean, that's that's higher than way higher than our commercial airliners. We could live in a cave like that. Which you know, then begs the question, it's like, oh, wait, why, why aren't we living in a subterranean system? We don't know. So I, do I, but they could be interdimensional, you know, like that whole Indiana Jones kingdom of the crystal skull <laughs> thing. The good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, I didn't watch the last one and I'm not going to. No, me yeah. neither, man. They, a lot of they did enough damage in the, in the, you know, I didn't think, think that the, Crystal Kingdom, whatever the hell it was, was that bad? But I didn't think it was that one. bad either. But the purists sure hated it. Woo! Did they? Yeah, and I'm a big, I, you know, it's one of my favorites. But you know, anything with the Indiana Jones, except for this new one when he's like 95 years old. Yeah, yeah. I'll I check mean, it out, on. but I don't want to see like my hero. I mean, I, there was a moment where I thought it was excessive. It's like, okay, so you survived the atomic blast by hiding in a refrigerator <laughs> and, fridge, yeah. lost and suffered no blunt force trauma whatsoever. He was fine. He Come got, it uh, could happen. By the way, I think he was like 70 then. Yeah, the man would have been in a coma. 80. Once, once, he, once he came out of that. So anyways, I hope, I hope that answers the question. Um, the, does, I think yeah. they're, I, but I, the bigger point there is I think they're us. I think they're just, oh. because think of, think of this. Think of how little it takes to turn a civilization into to elevate them to a status that that's that's unbelievable for the natives, right? And we're not talking about you know like when we showed up on the shores of, of North America or you know Aborigine tribes deal with. Just think of us, like for example, let's say there was some worldwide disaster, right? And you know they locked down Cheyenne Mountain and Dulce, New Mexico, and some of the underground bases within. 
not even two generations, right? 20 years, 40 years, you've pretty much lost all modern education. You've probably lost a lot of language, you know, refined language. You've definitely lost all the technology. And you would have kids after that point. Oh, so let's say after 40 years, hey, crank up some, some Blackhawks and start sending them out, you know, across the land, see what's happening. There'd be kids looking at these things like they, they were absolutely alien com compared to what they were used to. And that's our own technology to our own people. So, you know, if you even have a, a couple hundred years between civilizations and, and those civilizations, have, all they need is an access to uh, a tech that we don't have or we're not willing to give to the general public. Like, I firmly believe we have access in some limited fashion to a unified field engine, which is known as the UFO engine, right? Mm -hmm. a, a, an engine that can propel a craft in any direction at just about any acceleration and velocity, right? Yeah. But you can't. But because our civilization was built off of a petroleum empire and the internal combustion engine, we can't. Even if we wanted to, which is why the X Files was kind of right. You know, I mean, I know they kind of glorify. Man, I love that show. Right? Yeah, you can't. You can't do like a water-based engine, but you definitely can't do a unified-based engine because that would make everything else obsolete. I mean, think about right. it. the entire auto industry, the truck industry, shipping, trains. All that stuff it's like too no much money it, gone too right oh I mean, yeah it would be basically reinventing the wheel yeah there would be huge well i mean come on the the it is absolutely not a stretch it i remember that one x files pretty well where you know a guy created a, an engine that ran on water right mm -hmm. how long would it be before the oil and gas industry came to him and offered him the carrot or the stick and it's like look we'll give you five million dollars give us the blueprints and we'll go away Oh, you're going to say no? Yeah, lock the door. <laughs> That's it. That guy's gone. Yeah, yeah. Right? that probably would have happened first. They probably yeah, wouldn't well, have even bothered asking. But it depends. I mean, they could have sized him up. And some people, if they, if you get enough leverage, they can you can get them to shut up. You know, you secrets, secrets as you guys know, can be kept. Uh, it just right. depends on the motivation. You know, the, the well, line. Kennedy kept one, right? He kept the, what? Kennedy, Kennedy kept one pretty good. Sure. JFK. Or, or I'll, I'll give you I'll give you one one of my favorite because people say every once in a while will ask me um, uh, who my favorite president was and I say you know who it was it was the last guy with power which would have been uh, Dwight Eisenhower mm -hmm. because he was you know the, he was the Allied commander and he still had a lot of pull and there's this great story I heard from from some military guy on his deathbed and I absolutely, I love it because it rings, there's no plot holes in it. I absolutely love it, which was during, while Eisenhower was in office, right before Kennedy, right? He was, uh, he had gotten the word that they had just, they were just finishing up the early stages of the Groom Lake facility, right? In Area 51. And he didn't know anything about it, right? So he makes a phone call. He makes some calls like, can you get me a hold whoever's running Area 51? Rah, rah, rah. And, and he goes, yeah, I'd like to come out and, you know, check the place out, Right. Right. Thinking, you know, he still got clout because, you know, he was the guy. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, MacArthur and Patton and those guys, they, they answered to him and they said, sorry, you don't have clearance. You're a civilian now because people people forget the president sits way down the totem pole. He is just a talking head. He might as well just be uh, Ron Burgundy in a better suit. Right. And his response was, which I loved, it's like, so here's what's going to happen. <laughs> You're going to let me in there and give me a tour, or I'm going to call up my, some of my buddies. <laughs> oh, like this guy over here runs the first army. <laughs> and uh, we're going to come in there, and we're just going to take a tour on our own. How's that? <laughs> right? And they, and they, they meet us like, fine, fine, freaking come out here. Right? <laughs> so, and he wasn't bluffing. He was like, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm the guy. Until I die, I am, you know, I, you know, he made president because he was... You know, and which is, you know, he he didn't get his face on the money like Andrew Jackson or Grant or those guys, but everyone knew who he was. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the point was, is that he kept his, he, he never talked about it, right? So what you're saying then is you think he was the last inside guy, last honest guy. Last honest guy. Kennedy, yeah, well, come on. I and, and I, and again, I've tried not to be mean about Kennedy. But I, I try to remind people that because people were enamored with him, right? It wasn't just him. It was also his wife. You know, his life, whole... everything. I mean, yeah. he the, had that it factor. That... He did. He absolutely it had the, that it. No other president has ever been that guy. Yeah, and... You know what's funny about that, since hmm. we're talking about it, is yeah. 
when I was a kid growing up, they loved him. The media loved him. Now you hear about Obama, you, and they've almost gotten away from Kennedy because, right. in a way, they'd never say it, but he's almost controversial in in terms of how he, you know, didn't want the FBI. Didn't you know he fought against so much yeah. stuff. Yeah, he did. And he doesn't seem to be their darling anymore. No, he he doesn't. And the the Marilyn Monroe movie didn't do him any favors either. Uh, but well, but who's seen that movie? Nobody. Yeah. What, Marilyn Monroe movie? <laughs> it's actually, Monroe. it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't bad. I mean, if you're a Marilyn Monroe fan, you probably should watch it because it would explain a few things. So she was killed, though, right? I mean, don't, do you think she was killed? Okay, okay. Let me let me get to that part. So, <laughs> so Kennedy, if, if think about this. Remember, he was assassinated in '63. Right, mm-hmm. and the reason why it's like okay, why was he killed in sixty three? It's what, what? What do you think was coming up? And sixty four was an election year, right? No one could beat him in sixty four. No, no way. Yeah. Short of short of Jesus, <laughs> no one was going to beat this yeah. guy. And and uh, and I love the quote. Remember, he wasn't even supposed to be president in the first place. It was supposed to be a very young Dick Nixon, right? And the quote that I love uh, from Kennedy's father, I think it was Joe, Joe Kennedy, mm-hmm. not Joseph, or but Joe or Joseph. I can't remember. The first son was named Joseph or Joe. I think it was Joseph. Mm-hmm. Anyway, the, well, the first son was supposed to be president, and Joe Kennedy said, "Well, you want to be president, you got to be a war hero." And it's like that's what you got to do. So he became a pilot over in England. Yep. It's like, all right. <laughs> You're up. <laughs> next next guy, you know, next next guy. And same thing, right? He was the whole PT-109, whether it was real or not. You know, oh, he rescued people, you know, in the, in the war boat, whatever. So he was supposed to go, he was supposed to be reelected in 64. That would have taken 64 to 68, right? And then Bobby comes in, right? Because remember, he was attorney general. People loved Bobby too. And Bobby would have gone 68 to 72 yeah. and then 72 to 76. That is is a simple no-brainer. Look, I'm talking from the black hat side of things, right? If, if I'm in an Illuminati meeting, it's like right. 16 years of these guys? Oh, hell yeah, no. Yeah, they're not having it. No yeah, way. Yeah, we're not doing that. No that way. is a long-term problem. We're we're getting the, we're getting taking this thing now. Absolutely now. Maryland, and, and again, look what happened to Bobby, right? And that was the message they sent to Bobby, which was like, don't you even think about it. Don't you even think about it, right? So mm-hmm. what does he do? Right? It's like, you know, the, 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 the crowd's getting into him. He's getting all pumped up. So, yeah, I'll run for president. Nope, gone. You're gone. But Marilyn, think about this. And this goes for every president in the modern age. If you are having an affair with the president in any capacity, you are being totally clocked that entire time. Your mail, your phone. You, they probably have people on your neighborhood. They know where you are. And if you even have an inkling, you say the wrong thing, right? You know, you, 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 I'm not picking on women, but you know, women all of a sudden it's like, if Jack just starts treating me better, well, I'm going to take steps, right? If that yeah. conversation comes up and I don't care who she's talking to, that's it's like it. good fellas, right? Like good fellas. Yeah. It, yeah. Or, or not even good fellas. The, um, what was the line from uh, Heat? Same, you know, De Niro. The, uh, if yeah. There, if there, if there's a doubt, there is no doubt. Right? right. Yeah. And so it's no, of course, of course, you're gonna, you're gonna do it. I mean, if, again, if you watch the movie, the Maryland movie, you, you know, full well, it's like, oh yeah, she would have been that type. She would have said something on the phone, and somebody would have made a meaning. It's like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, I read uh, Marlon Brando's auto, autobiography years ago, and. He knew her well, and he talked to her that night, and he said she was happy, everything was good. You know, he goes, "There's no way, man." He goes, "It, it, it was one of those Kennedys, man. They, somebody had her wiped out, but she didn't. Yeah. She it, would have never done that herself." I no, no, and and look, people in power that you you think it's like the movies, and and they, that they need really heavy, legitimate reasons. Sometimes it's petty. I still believe to this day, for example, that Diana, remember Diana, mm-hmm. um. That whole thing went down from a simple optics standpoint. All right? And this is going to sound petty, but bear with me for a second. Which is, remember, her sons were going to get married eventually. And that's a problem because it's going to be a bit... And they were. Those weddings were spectacular. I mean, you know, you know the first wedding, you know, the oldest son, that was a spectacular wedding. Well, you don't want that tarnished in any optic. Which because Diana has, is going to show up at the wedding. Do you think anyone's going to care about anyone else <laughs> if Diana's showing up at that wedding? Oh no! I mean, the ta- every camera is going to be like they're going to be glued. It's like you know because they're going to look for any facial expressions. Like who's looking at her? Is she glaring at somebody? That whole drama thing. It's like how do you get rid of that? Well, it's easy. 
you just get rid of that. You make get her sure in a you tunnel. Don't, you make right? sure, she, yeah. You get don't, her in a you, tunnel on a dark night. Yeah, she doesn't show up at the wedding. She was the the story. There was a one. There was a wonderful documentary about. She was so incredibly popular compared to uh, to everybody else. I mean, she, oh, it, she, it was absurd. It, yeah. it was insane. And then another one who was really popular almost at that same time was a uh, JFK's son. Um, oh, right. Yeah, he was huge, and then he ends up going down in a plane accident. Yeah, which, yeah. It, well, and, I'm not saying that's he was. Oh no, murdered, no, no. The, but, the curse, I mean, the, whether the curse is real or that there are people in power, kind of like the X file, the, the wonderful X Files line, where they're sitting around a meeting with the, the lead smoking man. He goes, and I want to make sure he goes, he goes, the Buffalo Bills are never winning the Super Bowl. Am I understood? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the cancer man. Yeah, yeah. That's, and it was that's like a that's great, a great, yeah. that was a great line, which which is like you know the Kennedys are doing nothing. He goes, Te and come on, the Teddy thing was even kind of a weird deal which was like all right you know because teddy they, they, they would have gone for him but but that girlfriend drowning in the car and he got out <laughs> he like, was drunk right wasn't he well, oh, or was yeah. he, he was he always drunk. Faced, or was or was maybe he, that's why he drank so much or was he even there it doesn't even really matter though because either way he was discredited to, to the point chappaquiddick if you guys want to look it up anyone's listening i'm not going to spell it for you what was that um, chap chappaquiddick yeah chappaquiddick was the um uh, I think the, the the river or whatever that they okay. went off into the drink. Um, but at that point, he was, yeah, he was going to be a senator, of course. He had a huge amount of pull, mm -hmm. but he was never even, never, ever going to be president. And then well, he and, ran against what Carter, right? He, yeah, but it was never going to happen. They they knew that, and 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 that was fine for them. They they were like, no, no, but and come on. By that point, you you had total control. After Kennedy, I firmly believe that they were like, okay, we're not making mistakes. When it comes to presidential elections, we are controlling the narrative here. There's no, we're not going to be blindsided. Oh, I'm sorry, that great line by Joe Kennedy, where because Jack was asking somewhere along there was there's, the rumor was, and it's a great line where his uh, JFK's father it was was uh, was constantly obsessing about the numbers of the election. And Jack goes, why do you care so much? He goes, because I'm not paying for a landslide. And it's like, yeah, that's, that's about right. Because everyone thought that he did. He used his, his money connections and he snuck in that election uh, at the last minute under the wire. Because in the 60s, how much could you really control an election? Now, of course, as you know, <laughs> no. you, can, you, can, you can do You're everything not, you want. No, I don't oh, believe I'll, it. I'll give, you, I'll give you one more. The, I'll give you the I Obama thing. You. Look look this up if you get a chance. That he's gay? Wait, who? Oh, please. Obama. That, that, that was an obvious one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Anyone, we won't delve into it too much. Look up the, you won't find the video on YouTube. You'll have to go to like BitChute or Brighton or something. Look up the Joan Rivers quote. You, you guys, you guys have seen that, right? Oh, yes. I think I've seen that. Yeah. Oh, yes. What, what, what was where, it though? Where she was going into her, I don't know, her 30th facelift of the, of the month. And, you know, it's a routine. I mean, at that point, she goes in the doctor all the time. She's just getting as tightened and tightened. And that was the last time, by the way, anyone saw her because she goes in and, and you know, the TMZ's outside and they're asking her questions. It's like, hey, Joan, you got funny things for her? And, and, he, and they, she was talking about, they were talking about the elections or something like that. And he goes, when do you think we'll, we'll, we'll get our first gay president, right? And she stops. And without even blinking, she goes, well, Obama's already gay, right? <laughs> she goes, we already <laughs> have it with Obama. And then she starts, she goes, it's fine. Yeah. Just settle down, right? And then she starts walking up the stairs, and she could have pulled back. All she had to do was keep walking, but no, <laughs> she had to turn around. And she turned around, and she said, "And by the way, she goes and Michelle's Michelle's a tranny, right?" And they're like, and they're like, "What?" And 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 they go, and the guy didn't understand. He goes, or no, she said, um, she said trans. And of course, this was back when trans wasn't even a thing, right? In the in the news. And and he goes, what do you what do you mean? What's trans? He goes, transgender. It's like everybody knows. It's fine. Don't worry about it, right? And she heads right back up the stairs, and that's it. She never turned it back into a joke. She never pulled back from it, and that was it. That she died right then and there. She went to the mean, operating that table. That was it. Lift. I have oh yeah, a she theory. died after that. Yeah, so she, she died right then and there. She was dead yeah. twenty minutes later. And the the reason you again speaking from the you know I hung out with the smoking man from time to time. Uh, the reason why you would do that is because when she got out of there, if she got out of there, the media would be, you know, you need the follow-up questions. Think about yeah, it. They, yeah, they, what, did, what did you mean by that? Yeah, what did you mean by that? That would be constantly and We already suspected that she was a man, but what did you mean by that? <laughs> yeah, I have yeah, a theory you mean about by that. that? And you can't, you can't have that. You can't have her. I mean, come on. She's not subtle. 
So she was she was gonna slip. She was gonna, yeah. She's not subtle and she's not sober a lot. You know, she's on right. pills or or alcohol or, or both. Well, and, she held up well, right? I yeah, mean, that, she, up until that moment. So that, sorry. I, hold theory. One, one I know you have questions, but hang on. Let me throw this one more thing about Obama, which I love. If you want to look up something, look up. So I don't know how many movies you follow. You remember the uh, in Man of Steel, uh, the the new Superman movies? You remember the yeah, Black General? I don't, I, kind yeah. of. Okay, so you can look him up. There's a picture of him out there. Just look up uh, General in you know Man of Steel movies. That actor, uh, character actor, been on quite a few things. Light, light black skin. He uh, he was interviewed this radio station, and somebody was you know giving Obama all this credit, and he couldn't help himself. He just stopped. He goes, look, he goes, he goes when you're when you're listening to him, you're listening to me. I'm the guy that gave him all, most of his acting lessons. Right. And, and he was just going off about, you know, he, he seemed kind of proud of the fact only ticked off that no one was, you know, he couldn't take credit for it. Right. right sort yeah. of like the whole um, wag the dog movie at the end where, you know, the director wants to take credit and the CIA is like, uh, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> so somebody, you know, kind of like the follow-up question. Some people get head down to the studio or whatever, cause they were listening and they're like, dude, what did you mean by that? Right. And he just immediately retracted. I'm sure somebody got a hold of him. Yep. There he is. Yeah, that guy. Who is it? Okay, um, the that's the that's the actor that uh, played was played the okay. general in the the last Superman movies, right? And he kind of and I and you can kind of pick that up when you when you're talking the the thing that people have to understand is they figured out that as the years went by, whoever's going to be president has to be good on camera, and every election we've had for a long time now, they have. They've, they've gotten better and better and better on camera. Come on, look, Ronald Reagan was a freaking B-movie actor, right? right. And, uh, I mean, you played the Gipper, for God's sakes. And then well, Joe get... Biden can attest to that. I mean, I've never seen such um, charisma, and he's suave. You know, he <laughs> trips and stutters. And Well, well, there's that. But he was actually... They, they dropped the ball on that well, one. That, well, no, there, there's a whole other thing to that, which I don't know if you want to get into. But before I do. that... I want to well, hear well, this. Okay, but look at Trump. He was literally created as a reality star out of nothing. You know, people, there's a wonderful show, um, a documentary, where the producers of that show found him. He was just doing nothing in an aging office in New York. And, you know, it, it, his glory days were long behind him. It's like, yeah, we got this idea for a show. I think it might actually catch on. And, of course, you don't know what the general public's going to resonate with. And he was, which always surprised me, that Blue Team never tried to fight fire with fire. Meaning, so you've got a reality television guy, a non-politician, as president of the United States, right? And you're not going to counter that with every, because most of Hollywood is blue team, right? How many actors do we know? Oh, they're all blue team, that, like just the ones that played presidents that you could grab. You know, like like yeah. Morgan Freeman or Bill Pullman or... Uh, wait a minute, Martin. wait a minute. You're, you're fake news. There you go. Everyone knows <laughs> I'm the best thing that's ever <laughs> happened to politics. I'm amazing. Well, Ask anyone to tell you. He had that. It, he had that it factor to where now it doesn't matter how many indictments there are. It doesn't matter how many yeah. court appearances. Nobody cares. I mean, my mother, for example, or most of my family, she's like, he could be in jail. I'm still voting for him. <laughs> right. There you go. Well, at this point, I th it's just like like we got to talking about it. Like it, it is what it is. It's exactly what it looks like, and people see that. So it's more of a vote for the truth than it is or belief in a system that we used to have versus right what we're getting now i and that's I, joe biden so give me your take on that um, okay my my take on that is that now that we finally mercifully reached what i call act three where <laughs> where america has to be taken down the biggest problem with america is we were too good at what we did meaning there was nothing that the, the the line i used some years ago was the great reset can't start until america you know, starts crumbling uh, because you, that's the, the decline that we see now. Yeah, you, mean, we're declining in America. Nobody right. has declined more than us. And if you want to, come on, they they know better than that. You, if you want to project weakness in America, think about the 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 primaries that ran before Biden won. Remember, Biden was out of the race. If you remember out of that it, election, yeah, he was he was, uh, was behind Biden. Klobuchar, Buttigieg, and Sanders at one yeah, point. San, yeah, Sanders and, and, because, and um, uh, he only had like 1.5 million in campaign money. Yeah, Elizabeth Warren, she was like, nope, she's too 
whatever she is, Bernie Sanders, like, Indian. Oh, no, no, we're not. Yeah, we're, we're not going with Bernie Sanders. So it's like, oh, no, we're going to bring in Biden. It's like, what are you talking about? He's, he's too old. He can't he actually, can't actually possibly run. But if you want to project weakness, if you want to make America weak enough to where other, other countries, because before that, would you actually, you know, attack America? America is daunting from a other country standpoint. It's like, how do you even begin to beat America? But you start with degrading the, the society within, de degrading the infrastructure. We're a mess. And then, <laughs> come on, Biden? There's, there's yeah. leaders out there. They're like, look at him. It's like, oh, my God. And then you have yeah. your vice president. Look, I mean, I mentioned that on a podcast I did. What was that last night? Where I said, people forget that it's like if Biden trips and falls and dies tomorrow when he, you know, walking down the stairs um, or wherever he is. And again, kudos to whoever is propping him up at this point. Then it's got to be a lot of work, right? It's, I mean, it's got to be. Huge it's got to be. I hope they're getting paid well. Yeah. I hope they're getting they, paid you I mean, money. They can't keep him from wandering, but. My God, I mean, they, he's he's fallen so few times on, you know, he's fallen more on the, the Air Force One. Stage. Well, that's what we're seeing. And we're, there's so much that this is what I tell everybody. There is so much that we're not seeing. Can you imagine? No. no. Well, but, look but at Mitch can, McConnell. Oh, you know, there was a headline that was released today on Mitch where he said something to the effect of what you saw wasn't really what you saw. You know, what, what you saw didn't really happen. It's like, what do you mean? Where you just kind of froze and spaced that's out? That's like... For, that's like the Obi-Wan Kenobi in uh, Star Wars. Yeah, these yeah. Are, these aren't the droids you're looking for. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, it, I saw it on the internet on YouTube, so it had to have been true. <laughs> Just saying. Um, yeah, yeah, of well, course. Well, Biden's a piece of work, though, because that that's head shaking. Every time you well, see and, him, it's like... And he's running, and he's... Re, I mean, we I had a bet between a, a master gunner and me. Where he was, he was like, he was convinced that Biden was going to, um, they were going to like just have set up something where he was too ill to, to function and Kamala was going to come in after year two and it didn't happen. And then, and then we were kind of saying, well, he can't pick her, her, her approval ratings are so low. They can't mm -hmm. actually bring her in as the, as the VP again for a reelection campaign. And then it's right. like, oh, you really are trying to project weakness because that's exactly what you're going to do. You're going to have him come in as the oldest president ever you know every day is a new record and then kamala with the lowest rating i mean i don't even know what she's been doing lately i don't even see her in the news anymore i have uh, an idea um anyway uh <laughs> you, you, let me tell that. you yeah. she's doing I, it the hard way yeah i've been to combat i have ptsd and i have nightmares but no nightmare is is worse than the one that i have of kamala harris taking over as president let me tell you <laughs> well she's got that okay the, I, I don't want to pick on on people's ticks but when you're in politics you really can't have poker ticks and that that nervous did you say poker tits is that the cackle exactly that is what i said i said poker tits ticks <laughs> you got my attention <laughs> sir you know like a facial tick you know she's got that she's got that nervous cackle that yes. is uh, not no flat well that's gone though right the cackle's gone is like, it gone or is it, she it, it, I mean, so remember that one thing where she cackled and she just kept doing it and then all of a sudden she disappeared for like two weeks and oh, you think they, back, they, they back, took her to back like back an back. acting coach and they said, okay, we got to get rid of this thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. kind of like I mean, Lord of the Salad or something. Or the, the, the utensils it, at a dinner table, they kind of broke it down and said, no more cackling. And then that's when stuff got weird because she almost didn't know how to act. She had to replace it with something and she didn't. Yeah, have the, the, that I kind know. of, uh, you know, people yeah. go, um, um, that's, that was like her, um, and they took it from her. Yeah. And then, then she had to speak. And then yeah. that's when it all kind of went to shit. Yeah. I, again, yeah. that's that's where I think they they went the other route, which was up until up until Trump, which I think was the epitome of uh, having somebody television ready. You know, he was the epitome of that. My God, he literally went from a reality show to, to the Oval Office. Yeah. And then you switch over to, but then they had to change gears, which was we have to make America look vulnerable uh, to where other countries would be dumb enough to attack them uh you know the the tucker carlson thing which you probably saw recently which i i talked about last night which was when he came on and said that um uh that it's only a matter of time before we get into a hot war with russia only because they can't allow the election to happen next year 
he was hitting all the beats that I had already been talking about, which was, look, we're, we're already in a war with Russia. We just haven't signed the papers. Espionage has been happening all the time, which is weird, right? You know, if, if, the media, if the media doesn't cover it, right, if the papers haven't been signed, is it really a war? No, it's not. You can blow up each other's stuff all day long, and you can cover it up and make it seem, oh, it's this industrial accident. Oh, hey, I know that Russian ship just blew up and sank. But it wasn't us. Uh, but they, he, he made it seem to think, say that how desperate. What the point was? Did you guys watch it at all? That little snippet. I, that I he heard did? about it, but I didn't. I'll, I, I'll I, send I it to you. I'll send it to okay. you. It's really, it's really good. But he, um, he basically said the the point was he said, look, we've gotten to the point where we've criminalized politics, meaning, sure. as as you know, they're indicting. <laughs> come on, they're indicting Trump to see if they can, one, get him to back out of the election process, which he's not going to do. No. And two, no to slow it down to where he doesn't have any campaign. He's not, he can't do a whistle-stop tour. He's going to be basically doing campaign quotes from the courthouse steps, which, again, most people don't care, right? The, 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 the whole, that whole Republican primary thing where all those people were lined up, right, which weren't Trump. It's like, why are you guys even talking? No one That's cares. That's what I you, said. Like, why? All, looks, all you guys are kind of all you guys are gunning for is potential VP candidates, and yeah. I'm pretty sure he's going to pick um, either um, either Tulsi Gabbard or the who's the lady from South Dakota. Um, can't remember. Pretty. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. What, what's her name? Yeah. Um, she's hot. But yeah, she is hot. <laughs> pretty girls oh, still still get things. The Marsha Brady syndrome never <laughs> never goes away. Uh, that was the funny thing about the the Brady movies is they introduced Marsha Brady like if she was seventies but in the nineties and it's like nothing changed, right? She still got everything she wanted. <laughs> it's right. like, yeah, of course she did because that's that's what happens. Um, hey, but if you listen. weapon. If, sorry, sorry wait, if, if you military, if, sorry, if you criminalize politics, what happens is so they're doing all these things to Trump. And the, in the hopes that he loses, but the fear is that you, which is really the, the bigger problem is, is once you do that, you turn it into a blood feud, because if hypothetically Trump won, he's going to turn around and do the same thing to everybody else, right? He's going to oh, come around sure. and say, oh, no, I'm indicting well, you and you and you and you. When and, I seen that and, mugshot, that's what that mugshot told me was well, that my mug... buddies were making fun of it. And I said, if he wins, yeah, that's going to come back. That mugshot's going to mean something. Well, yeah, but that mugshot was all. Don't don't think for a second that mugshot was like a like a one off. That they went, somebody went to that courtroom and they can remember they also phoned in his um his uh uh his vitals. Did you see that on the on the no. report? Uh -uh. So they phoned in his vitals and they phoned in. It's like, oh no no, uh, how how tall is Trump? Six three. Well, how how heavy is he? Two fifteen. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, are you kidding? That's that's line <laughs> that's linebacker. <laughs> yeah, in the pros, it's like right. really two fifteen, and nobody's buying it. But the mugshot, I know full well. It's like a you know, if you looked at all the other people that that took the mugshots, you know, on the group that it got his was the lighting was perfect, the angle was perfect. It's like it was instantly turned into a t-shirt. It's like, yeah, I know what instantly. you guys are doing. Well, he, this is what I said. There's no way he didn't practice that. He practiced right. that for yeah, months. Yeah, but I don't. I also don't think in picture. case he screwed it up. You're right, absolutely right. He probably did practice it, but in case he screwed it up, I guarantee some. You know, come on, somebody at the jailhouse wouldn't take much. It's like, all right, can we get a couple more of those? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah, that one. I mean, come on, five hundred dollars, a thousand dollars. Like, yeah, <laughs> keep your freaking mouth shut. Well, and, so we, uh, we're talking Tucker Carlson, right? You 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 brought him up, and I'm going to bring something up that he just. He just said, which I ha had been saying pr previously, and my friends were laughing at me. They're like, so you think you think he's going to be killed? And I said, look, if they can't indict him, if they can't get him out of this race some way or another, I don't think they want to do that, but I think that they will do that. You know, well, and, uh, and I thought of that, too. He, he opened with part of that. In fact, here, I'll, I'll send you the quote. Can, do we have a chat room in here? We do. Yeah. It's uh, it's not like there's not a track record of no. I mean, is there a is there a button in here to insert text? Yeah. Do you not see? It should be on your right hand side. Do you not? Uh, do you not see it? Do you not have the ability? Lower, lower left, right. Lower. I'll tell you what. There's a private chat. If you put it in there, I'll I'll put it in the chat room. Well, I'll tell you what. Here, I'll make it easy for you. Let me. Uh, I'll just shoot it to you. Check your um. Check your email. This is okay. the. This is the, the thing. But but to your point, um, I, I thought of that too, of course, and so did Tucker. 
which was could would you remove him could you remove him you could but remember you could have already done that by now mm -hmm. if you wanted to discrediting him is way by far the safer move because as you know the the rabid fans that are out there and i've never voted in my life so i don't have a i don't have a stake in it one one way or the other but my family does which is if he died it wouldn't even matter if you you could not pick unless he was killed in a backyard by a couple of dogs that got off leash even then right people would be suspicious but if he dies any other way uh he the there would be riots I mean, it would be bad because people would think, well, they, they got rid of him. So the safer bet, even though it sounds ridiculous, the safer bet would be a war because, you know, an actual hot war, because at that point you can implement some of the war powers mm -hmm. protocols and say, well, we really shouldn't have an election right now. There it is. Yeah, that one. Have an election right now because uh, it's not time to do it. And you postpone the election indefinitely. So there you go. I don't know if you're playing the audio for that, but the audio, I can't hear it. Let's see. Do you have a way to play the audio? Yeah, give me a second. It's a, it's a pretty good thing if you want to spare the five minutes. In the teeth of a very tough recession, and that makes everything much more intense. And so if your goal is to maintain power, and if you think once you relinquish power, the problem with everything becoming, the problem with criminalizing politics is the people who do it imagine or know that it will be done to them. So once you start indicting your political opponents, you know that you have to win or else they're going to indict you if they win. Right. Right. And so they can't lose. They will do anything to win. So how do they do that? They're not going to do COVID again. I know everyone on the right is afraid they're going to do COVID and mask man. They're not going to do that. They can't do that. If they've already been exposed, that won't work. There's going to be. No. What are they going to do? They're going to go to war with Russia is what they're going to do. There will be a hot war between the United States and Russia in the next year. And really? On the, of, yes, of course. They want it anyway. Um, I don't think we'll win it, but that's a separate analysis. But I think it's a political matter. They need to declare war footing in order to assume war powers in order to win. I believe that. And I think well, the evidence suggests that's true. So if you're worried about our politics getting like even more vicious than it already is, and people being hurt in our politics, which is entirely possible, you should be worried about the prospect of an open war. We're already at war with Russia, of course. We're, we're funding their enemies. So we're fighting Russia, but I mean an open battle with Russia, where we say we're at war with Russia. I think that could easily happen. Uh, you know, I think we could Tonkin engulf our way into it, where all of a sudden missiles land in Poland. The Russians did it. Our NATO allies have been attacked. We're going to war. I could see that happening very easily. So if you're worried about that, you need to put as much pressure as you possibly can on the Republican-held Senate okay. to force. You, you probably stop it at this point. So, but yeah, that that was basically the gist of it. And I I was on board. I've been talking about that for months. So, uh, so. so the take would be that if we're in, if we start a war with Russia, yeah, we get into that. There, there's an election coming up. We don't want to switch presidents. Most likely at that point, we yeah, just the, stick with the guy. Yeah, the whole horse can't don't switch horses in midstream. Okay, that, that whole trope, which is, which which was done in, and the people will bring it up. They, I guarantee, they'd bring it up if that was happening. The whole FDR thing. Remember, FDR had already served two terms, mm -hmm. and but the war wasn't over yet, and yeah. they're like, yeah, you know what. And he gets he really, two more, it, right? And then and they kept him in there until he died. And then Truman was in there to finish the war out. You know, he was the guy that they got the So that's what they would do. But in this case, there wouldn't even be what they're what they're kind of the 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 thought is is that you don't even get to the point where where what you want to do is you you don't want to wait too long where you're already in the primaries. You want to do it beforehand so it's not even on anyone's mind. Otherwise, the Republicans are going to come in and say, well, you're using this as an excuse and we absolutely should have an election and blah, blah, blah. No, you do it early if, if you okay. can. This is going to sound stupid, but I'm going to say it anyway. Do you, do you think that now that Tucker Carlson's brought this to everybody's attention, obviously he gets millions of views. Yeah. Couldn't they still go through with something like that if – Sure. I mean, I know they're desperate. Sure. But sure you can. they can still do it. And then sure, because, now we know that. I you mean, know. it. well, there's a couple schools of thought there. One, of course, depending on how what level you want to think at, 
uh, you know, could, that, I mean, could be manifesting 101. The fact that Tr- Tucker said this, and you've got all these people thinking it, it's like, oh my gosh, we're going to get into a hot war with Russia. Does it actually, you know, does it make make it happen? Um, but the other thing is, because blue media, in fact, there was only one, when I ran that story yesterday, only one media outlet covered it. You know who it was? Russia Today. I run. I read the Russia Today newspaper on a regular basis, and you know what? They didn't. They didn't debunk it. They didn't say it wasn't going to happen. They just said said it. Matter of fact, they said, "Oh yeah, Tucker says we're going to be in a hot war with with Russia." That's it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Wow. It's like it, nobody. He nobody. Adds, came to... He also what? adds he doesn't think we'll win it. So well. <sighs> Kind of like what what he was where he's going is because he and I are, I think are the same age. Uh, he's going with the did we win Vietnam, right? We well, haven't won anything thinking, since but, Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the war. It, it, oh God, there's there's some wonderful documentaries out there, but the one I recommend that refers to this is called Why We Fight. And the line is it's a great line. He it said. You know, when you get into war nowadays, we've refined it to such an art in America that you're getting 20, 30 percent return on investment. He goes, when you see that sort of return on investment, you're going to see start seeing a lot more war <laughs> because oh, of course, yeah. war yeah. is way, way more profitable than it used to be. So and come on, nothing's short. What, what short war? What short conflict have we done, you know, ever? Well, you know, the last this, one was 20 years, right? So we, yeah, it, we, we will never win. Well, he, he will never he, win he, another war yeah, unless he, it is on our soil. What he, yeah, what he's saying. There you go. What he's saying is is that there's no what. Why would win? How? In fact, how would you win it? Exactly. What's mm-hmm. what's the goal, right? Which because it would be so weird. It's like really, do are we going to try to march on Moscow? And then what? Then then what happens? You know what happens to the other countries? You know what happens to to Belarus? What happens to uh, you know all the, uh, the the countries that are holding on to to, to Russia and stuff like that? What, yeah. What's what's the motivation? It doesn't really what the mo- matter what the motivation is. The the motivation is the distraction from everything else. Uh, right. So it does. It serves two purposes. It it you don't want to switch horses mid race, and you don't. Also, you keep everybody's focus off of what's really going on. And- yeah. Yeah. Which is why I was I was put. You know, they tried this 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 hot war that he's talking about should have happened a long time ago. Um, but Russia didn't go for it. Russia's come on, they know the old tricks. You know, they've been doing war longer than we've been doing right. war. Yeah. And and come on, they're they're built for it. And they they're the they're the only group that survived the uh the Nazi land assault. <laughs> the only group. We couldn't mm-hmm. have done it. In fact, yeah. if there was a if there was a land bridge, the what? Or said and then they took him down too to boot, right? So they, yeah. they storm the castle and bring him yeah. down. So. Well, yeah, but they lost. <laughs> People you and said I know a it, word. It, that I really want to hone in on, what? and that was distraction. <clears throat> yes, I want to know what your thoughts are on what the distraction is with releasing all of this UFO crap recently. I, uh, I think the the UFO stuff is is tricky for them because they want to release it. You know, anyone in the truther community, if something happens that you know there's a big UFO fleet that shows over somewhere. They'll 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 say oh it's got to be it's got to be Project Blue Beam it's got to be fake or it's got to be ours America is very cagey that way in that we like taking credit for stuff we didn't do which I love we 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 love saying stuff like well oh, those UFOs probably you know probably aren't ours wink wink you know it's like we'd love we'd love to take credit for it you know kind of like the line when um uh the one i love when the the sr-71 spy plane you know it went from literally from inception to retirement nobody knew about it to where <clears throat> the air force did a press conference when they were retiring it love it right you know they bring people out to the desert it's like oh yeah we're retiring our spy plane and they're going the what now <laughs> and and the line that I, I remember the air force general i don't remember his name but um they asked him of course you know they said well hey what are you going to replace it with right he looks, he goes, no, nothing. <laughs> of wow. course, right? Because there's not going to be, we technically, you didn't have spy planes to begin with. I, mm-hmm. I, I love America's thing where it's like, there are no spies, technically. We have no spies. Oh, we've got intelligence networks, but we have no spies, officially. 
So when, when spy things happen, but anyway, so sorry, for as far as distractions, I don't think the distraction is really so much from the alien agenda. I think the alien agenda, um, or, or what, if you want to do some sort of blue beam or introduce a, a new civilization, whether they're real or not, I think that's just a wild card. They can pull out whenever they think things are getting out of hand. And then they turn it into Reagan's UN speech from years ago, where he said, well, you know, wouldn't all the world, wouldn't we all just get together if there was an external threat from outside this world? It's like, yeah. Yeah, it's human nature. Of course it would. We wouldn't be fighting each other if there was something fighting in the sky. I do think there there is a little bit of a distraction from, uh, from the uh, the pandemic and pandemic related things. Mm -hmm. Remember the remember the the pandemic. We I knew exactly when the mandates were going to start rolling back because when it happened was when the Ukraine war started officially. It was like we were like you know masks and shots and blah 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 blah, and it was nonstop as you guys know, right? And then all of a sudden. Ukraine war and then all the pandemic stuff is like put on the back burner it's like yeah. nobody cared anymore it's, it's like what yeah ukraine war cured the pandemic right it did. I mean, it absolutely well, cured. biden biden what? said it was over so i mean yeah yeah you know. biden biden said right. it's over and so what he was saying by the way it's like you know could could they roll it out again well they could roll out little parts of it if they wanted to do another thing but you can't do it you can't do another rollout like that without real without a real scare without some real fear and by that i mean something something ebola in nature where you you have to you all of a sudden you hear about a town that's been sealed off like um oh what was that dustin Hoffman movie outbreak outbreak, outbreak right where they seal off the outbreak, freaking yeah. town and it's like and then all of a sudden well you know in real life they probably would just nuke the town and then it turns into a stephen king novel you know the stand <laughs> So, right. but I, I, the, if you did that, then you could generate some real fear and, and turn it into something. But the, again, I was impressed with the fact that, you know, the repetition, you know, the Nazis said so many times, it's like, if you repeat something over and over and over, it's like, be afraid, wear the mask, take the shot, be afraid, wear the mask. Yep. Take the shot. Um, that did work with a lot of people. I mean, there's still, I don't know where you guys are, but 10 to 20% of the people I run into on a regular basis, you can tell they're going to wear the mask for the rest of their lives. They're not taking yeah. them off. The mandates it doesn't, it doesn't matter who's in the White House. It doesn't matter who says that it's over. They they feel that's now their new comfort zone, and that's that's powerful. The fact that you did this, it's like yeah, they're driving past me in their car wearing masks all by themselves. It's like wow, we're gonna <laughs> so, we're, we're gonna keep doing that. So right, um, but, but anyway, I think the cover up. I think if you want to look for a distraction, that's what I was looking for. I think it was always supposed to be, you you do a pandemicy thing, and then you get the war started either in the and i'm really disappointed in the chinese the chinese you're listening oh what the hell <laughs> you know they're, they're listening they probably are well no i <laughs> i am disappointed because you know it was supposed to, I, it was supposed to be a kind of a repeat where it's like you have a european theater and you have pacific theater and the taiwan thing it's like oh nancy pelosi's going to taiwan and the chinese are it's like you better not do it right and then you know i'm i'm waiting it's like, oh man you're gonna do flyovers what are you gonna do what are you gonna do yeah like, yeah and they did nothing absolutely well, freaking well, in nancy's defense in nancy's defense she heard that they had vodka half off so that's why she was going <laughs> but, but i mean it's like you can't get I, I shouldn't pick on china so much but come on i mean i i understand now why the japanese beat up on them so badly they just they <laughs> no the japanese have a better the, the, that's that that whole warrior spirit you know you hear the stories where it's like you hear the stories and you don't believe it right it's like oh no japan just rip the hell out of these guys uh you know back in the day and it's like really because they out no was you know yeah i was stationed but, in japan several times so yeah. you know I, I got to hear the history both from the u.s side and from the japanese side yeah they, yeah. they wrecked house yeah yeah the 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 i will say this you know the the you know the the movies did get some of the things right you know the duty and honor and come on Name me another group that had, you know, the fact that kamikaze is a term that's attributed to one group, right? Nobody came, nobody was the new kamikaze. It was these guys. It's like, oh, yeah, fine. You can wear a vest and, and you know, blow up some stuff or put <laughs> flying a plane, you know, and, and, you know, where there's a ceremony before you get on the plane. It's like, oh, man. So you so don't think dude. that China is going to be the, the superpower that everybody thanks they have a chance to i mean if you believe yeah. in the prophecy oh my god i mean if you believe it i mean let's let's put it nobody else has a stand has the potential of putting a standing army anywhere we don't have it russia doesn't have it nobody's got it except for china the but does china have the nerve to do it 
you know, do would their troops be able to how what what sort of troop morale? And I really don't say this a lot, but do they have the troop morale to 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 pull into a country and hang out like Rome did? God, I miss the Romans. <laughs> the, the Romans, the fact that they could for a thousand years, the, you know, the difference, and I, 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 this is sport, sports reference for you. You know, people say, oh, is the American, you know, the greatest empire in the world. I go, no, we're the Michael Jordan of empires. We were the flashiest. We got the best show. We're the greatest show on earth, no question. But the Wilt Chamberlain of, of empires was freaking um, Rome. You know, right, the, yeah. mo mostly because you convince the population to go along with your mantra. We lie to our public, right? We we say we're the good guys, like we're taking it over, you know, for 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 good guy reasons. Rome, it's like, so you know, the public demanded it. It's like, what have you conquered for us today? Oh, you tore up half of Europe. That's fantastic. Who are we hanging in the Colosseum? Right. And that yeah. they, that century yeah. after century to where after a thousand years, I think they was like forgot who they were. Now, did years. you use the Wilt Chamberlain referen reference because uh, Rome was just Wilt fucking Chamberlain everything? Could, here's here's the difference because Michael <laughs> Jordan. I'm from that era. Look, I went to. I stopped watching basketball when Jordan stopped you, playing. You didn't even hear me. What? What are you gonna say? I said because Rome was fucking everything. <laughs> okay, you, uh, for those who are listening, you'd have to know the Wilt Chamberlain. A joke that, that Will Chamberlain slept with a lot of women. Six thousand. It was like six hundred. Yeah, 6, he, he, he absolutely had no shortage of women. But well, <laughs> here's here's the difference that I I don't want to dwell on this too much. But it's but it's a good point, which is when when Jordan came into your house, you know when when you were when he came into your arena, you cheered for him. It's like I want to see a yeah. show. I want to see freaking Jordan. I want to see him posterize somebody. Right? It's cool. Right? Mm -hmm. When Will Chamberlain showed up in the arena everybody booed him and because <laughs> your because mom was you could Will not Chamberlain showed up your mom got pregnant well it wasn't it wasn't <laughs> okay it was that wasn't it just that reminds so me of that couldn't, old meme hide your wives hide your children <laughs> you couldn't stop him will chamberlain came over and your cat's pregnant oh god oh my god he, well, he does love mean, the you, pussy you could, you could triple team him and you couldn't stop him he was getting during that amazing well, he was a monster though. he was huge he was a big guy yeah 61 62 season he averaged 50 points a game right averaged 50 yeah. points a game he meaning no matter what you did he was going to at least get 50 points again and just to make the point they let him go one night and he's you know he's, he's the only player in history to score 100 just right. because he could it's like oh yeah i'm gonna score 100 points and then i'm gonna sit on the bench and the the point and he had a quote which was he goes and i loved it he goes everyone hates goliath and it's like yeah <laughs> that's yeah that's, that's the truth true so they, anyway, the point was America, three women America. that night. I think that's what they said it was three women a night or more. He would have had to have done during that time frame. Because you can look that up and you might be able to find that, but it was like six thousand women during the course of his career. Oh yeah. He was yeah. proud of it too. Oh no, I, I thought I, I didn't know much about basketball when I was in grade school, but and and I was one of the you know, back in the day when when you buy like the Guinness Book of World Records, you know, the little the little book and you thumb through it. When you went to the basketball section, I thought he was basketball. I mean, yeah. there's just all these records. It was just this wall of records. And there were stats they didn't even keep back then. Yeah. And he owned them all. And, and it's like, I, I I mean, people forget that when he retired, they were still trying to recruit him out of retirement. All the way up until he was 50. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, he never stopped playing. You know, he, he he just, you know, went around to different, you know, pickup leagues and stuff like that. And people saw him. It's like, good Lord, he can still beat the crap out of everybody. And so, anyway, the point was, circle back to, yeah, there's Will Chamberlain. Yeah, fantastic. And players still say he was the strongest guy ever. I mean, look, he, look, you want to see some wonderful testimonial, listen to, like, Arnold Schwarzenegger talking about Will Chamberlain. And this was back, you know. We when, did uh, Conan too, right? Yeah. Conan yeah, 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 he was, yeah. He was yeah, that together. And uh, yeah. Red, who was uh, Brigitte Fonda, Br or Brigitte Nielsen. Yeah, Brigitte yeah, Nielsen, yeah. who was uh, Stallone, yeah. Stallone's wife. She was wife. huge, too. Yeah, she was she was a freaking monster, and uh, that's a huge bitch. Yeah, and I love I love. There was a little story about uh, Brigitte where she got the role. You know, her first role was playing Dolph Lundgren's uh, wife in Rocky IV. Right, and uh, <laughs> the fact she just she just went straight up to his hotel room, knocked on the door, and something skimpy. That was it. <laughs> All right, and Mark. Alone, right? Because then they got he, married. And yeah, then they got married. It's like good for you. Yeah. And Here's the question of the day. Yeah, what's the question? Question of the day. Yeah. Would you hit it? Who, Brigitte? Yeah. Uh yeah. Yeah. I hit it with a fucking two by four. 
Brigitte, yeah. she didn't, she didn't, she didn't keep herself. I mean, she's European, so you never know what happens over there. Uh, but yeah, back in the day, no, she was, she was freaking gorgeous. I, she was, when I watched Rocky four, the, the first time, uh, yeah, she really stuck out. It's like, wow. She was something yeah. again. I lost all respect with flavor, Flav. Flavor, that's Flav, all I must yeah. say. Flavor, well, Flav. She, did, she went. She went on and did a uh, Beverly Hills Cop. Uh, yeah. And she ended up fucking the who was it? Tony Scott it was the the director, and there was a big deal because she was married to Stallone at the time, and uh, it was pretty controversial. And that's ended that ended their marriage there because everything looked good until it didn't. Yeah. I think you could have well, stopped that. She fucked. Oh yeah, she loved it. Yeah, you don't, loved you don't want to get okay. Okay, while while we're on that, let's let's go into a different direction, <laughs> really quick, which is when it comes to Hollywood. I am I'm a big fan of Hollywood gossip. Uh, when when it comes to Hollywood, it's one of those things I throw at media because you, know, you know I say, look, there's conspiracies and everything. There's business and politics and sports and entertainment and yeah, even science and journalism. And they say oh, it's like, well, entertainment. I go, I go, really? You want me to give you? I mean, look at um, uh, the illusion of Hollywood. I go. I've thrown this at different producers, and I go, really? I go, okay, resolve this statement. There are no gay leading men in Hollywood, right? And then, you know, I get this snicker, you know, there. So I go, really? I go, name three of them. Rock and, Hudson. And, and I go, you can't. I go, even if you wanted to, you can't because you're afraid of the backlash that, that might happen out there. I mean, come on, let's, you know. So does it have to be from this era or... Well, no, no, no. In fact, yeah, no, but but that's that was one of my points. Until you die, your secrets yeah. are pretty much kept in Hollywood. Which well, is I think when you Montgomery Cliff, right? Was well, oh, dude, Rock Hudson, James uh, Dean, Rock Hudson, James Dean, um, um, or what do you call what do you call Rock Hudson in a wheelchair? Oh my God! <laughs> <laughs> oh, you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Rollades. Yeah, oh. that's that's an old one. That was from uh, when we were by, kids. By the way, I mean, he was absolutely straight until he died, and then everybody came out of the closet. It was the whole Tiger Woods yeah. um, the, cocktail, cocktail waitress scenario. Once the first one comes out, they're all coming out. And if you die, they're coming out. Uh, the the one, There's one that I love. I'll give you a mind bender really fast, which is um, so uh, John Ritter, right, who played. So John Ritter yeah, yeah, in real Jack life, Tripper. right? Gay man pretending to be straight because his audience is mostly middle-aged women, right? Going to work every day, playing Jack Tripper. <laughs> a straight man pretending to be gay, be gay. for the yeah. landlords so he can stay with Janet and Chris. Right. What was going through his head when he, when he got <laughs> home? It's like, what am I doing? I'm, I'm at, he was absolutely doing the exact opposite and so, kept it all the way, you know, till his, till his freaking dying He day. wasn't gay, though. He was married to a... Uh... Oh, come on, man. You're old enough to know better. <laughs> but right, you're right. I'm sorry. Gay? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Gay people don't get married. No. Was right. he really gay? Right. I right. Didn't... No, no, no. I get that. Gay people don't get No, it's just, it's true. If you're gay, it, well, no, it's called bearding up. I know if you know. <laughs> Pun so intended. Bearding up and it throws people. No, I mean, look at, I'll give you a great example. Um, Cary Grant. Okay, Cary Grant, who. They say he was gay, right? He was with. Um... Randolph Scott. Yeah, right. Yeah, Randolph Scott. You know, the, the Randolph Scott. And the only reason I even know his name is because of the Blazing Saddles reference. If you're wondering, it's like, why do I know that name? It, because in the Western Blazing Saddles, they said, you do it for Randolph Scott. And then they go, Randolph Scott. You know, they put their hands <laughs> in their heart. Because he was this chiseled Western character actor, right? That, that you know, didn't, didn't have much in the way of actors, but he had this chiseled you know, Western thing. And he and Cary Grant had his bachelor pad together for like 10 years. And yeah, the, yeah, the bachelor yeah. pad, right? So yeah. do you guys know what the first sign of AIDS is? Oh, God. What? A deep pounding sensation in the rectum. Oh, my God. <laughs> the fact that you have multiple AIDS jokes worries me. Uh, right? it, really, it really worries me. But, but my point, I'm a my baby point was, guy. What do you want? My <laughs> point was is that Cary Grant at one point, here's how they butch you up. You ready? So Cary Grant to throw everybody off the trail because you get worried after a while, right? And the women they, loved him, by the way. He they he absolutely was a, adored him. Like a George Clooney type of guy back yeah. then. So they had him marry one of his secretaries, and then almost immediately afterwards, they divorced because he supposedly hit her a few times. Right? You know that whole macho thing. So if you want to go out on a, like, 
yeah, it's like slapped way. around, you know, Sean oh, Connery. Do that style. Again. <laughs> yeah, so he, so he, so they divorced because he was he was you know he was too rough, too manly. And it's like right. oh, okay, that's brilliant. And so that's that's how you do it. And so yeah, come on, Hollywood marriages for for appearances' sake. Oh, for all sure, day yeah, yeah. Long. Or oh. hell, if you're gonna if you're gonna do that, uh, sorry, not to backtrack a little bit, you know, the whole Obama and uh, Joan Rivers type thing. Right? Thank you yeah, for yeah. coming back to that because yeah, the one uh, that always kills me was um, Roddy McDowell, right? Oh, like yeah, yeah. he came no out question. years later. They found out, and I was thinking, really? Like it took it took that long to figure out Roddy <laughs> right. McDowell? Or don't the 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 I have heard from various producers that. Um, and I'm not picking on gay people. Look, they're the most creative people in the world. Um, that that once they're they're easier to control in Hollywood because once you get your fan base, which is mostly straight, no matter what, you don't want to lose that, and they hold that over your head. It's like, oh yeah, you can right. come out, and then they they'll throw out examples like it's like yeah, Anne Hache came out. Remember, she was dating Ellen DeGeneres <laughs> for like what a week. Her career. Yeah. Or, or look at um, uh, Kelly McGillis from Top Gun, mm. right? She came out and it's like, oh, yeah, I'm the hot shit, right? You know, I did Top Gun. I'm gay. It's like, yeah, so casting calls, no more for you. And uh, it just goes on and on and on. So uh, they, they well, don't, you don't want to risk it. You, you just so don't. I, I got a question for you since we're on this topic. And yeah. it, gay. What's with the trans, <laughs> what, what is your thoughts on the transgender movement, which it has always been around? Well, I think, I think, I think it is the the fact that you put a spotlight on it recently is just the what we were talking about earlier. It's it is the dividing the 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 dividing of America. Okay. No, oh my God. I mean, yes, of course they've been out there for uh, tra trans community, which is you know fringe of a minority. Mm -hmm. Is you know if you believe in the minority, the, the entire gay mi minority is half in, half out of the closet. Makes up one in ten people. And then you divide up, you know, however you want. But the the fact that you are, again, I knew there was an agenda going on when the, the kids were getting involved. When you're promoting, when there's all these doctors and all these, you know, and part of it, you could say they're getting on the money. Of course, you know, why not? You know, if, if people are willing to pay you tons of money, why wouldn't you do it, right? It's like ethics, you can throw out the window. Plastic surgeons should have ethical problems. Right. But don't. Yeah. Um, but it is it is difficult to watch because the the um of again probably part of the narrative of how it's just wrecking families i mean there are families because they don't know what to do with it um normal normal gay outlets in families that's been around forever right mm -hmm. but this is this is something new and the I, nobody knows what to do with it and so right. i don't i don't think the pronouns are going to stick any of that crap uh it's just silly in fact by the way while you're on that real fast I, gotta, I have to mention this because it was really bothering me that uh, some of the people have been going around and saying, oh, you know, they can't define what a woman is. So many people are afraid to answer that question, right? It's like, what's mm -hmm. a woman? What's a woman? It's like, wait a minute. Isn't it, isn't it simple enough to say it's, for me, you know, I, I stare at this as, wait, wait, isn't it just a human being that can produce eggs? Right. Isn't, isn't that really it? Now, there's, a, of course, the, the trans group will come out there and say, well, you know, that's not that's not the de definition that I subscribe to. And that's not I want to change that. It's like, well, OK, you you, you want to change it. That's fine. But I have to remind you of something. And this is something. Sorry, I, I don't want to dwell too much, but I don't believe in male privilege and I don't believe in white privilege. I believe in majority privilege. Meaning if you have one of one or more of three things, which is you either have the numbers, you have the military, or you have the money, right? If you have one or more of these things, you're probably going to have the majority. And if you do, you are going to take privileges. You are going to bend the rules to suit you, you know, to keep what you're doing, you know, to favor your group. And so I, you know, anyone I, I talk to, you know, along the fringe community is like, look, you're there's majority and minority if you want to change the rules you have to become the majority you're not going to be able to change it as a minority you might be able to bend you know change a few things here and there but that's just how it works and once you become the majority you are going to start you know doing things that other that other lesser groups are going to you know start criticizing that's just right. how it's gone throughout time no group when they reach the majority has ever said well this is just good enough and you know let's be fair to everybody else it's like no yeah. No, you, you try to keep what, what you're doing. So I'm offended. 
<laughs> no, no. <laughs> in, short, in short, you think that this whole push just because it really it's a group that's like you said, extremely small, extremely small. and they have a ton of power. I mean, yeah. like, well, the, the amazing. The, the, their problem is that, well, their their asset and their problem is that blue team is very, very sympathetic to um uh, the, the gay community. I was going to say the pride the community. I mean, right. I mean, it, it just is. Hollywood is mostly blue. Right. And the media is mostly blue. So the, the two go hand in hand. But the, the problem is, is that even if they wanted to criticize it, they can't because they're all under the same flag and they're not allowed to. So, which is why I get so upset. Yeah. And I'll give you, I'll give you uh, the sports one really quick. I am very, very much against the, uh, um, uh, the sports crossovers, you know, turn I mean, the Canadian, the Canadian weightlifter the other month. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Drove me freaking insane. It was like, yeah. you broke, you broke a record. That's never going to be broken by a bi biological female ever. Right. And you did it while you were 40. And I, I called this months and months ago. I said, okay, here's where it ends and where the whole thing just falls apart. You're saying that LeBron, who's going to be 40 here pretty soon, right? When LeBron turns 40 and a lot of athletes at that level become you know they're warriors they don't want to quit right it's like you know what he could shave his beard yeah. spend a year transition over the WNBA and destroy it 200 he could points go in a that game. first season and just annihilate them right is that I, fair in, in any capacity i, I would no. actually like to see that happen <laughs> but right. i want to see him do it with the beard <laughs> He probably could, but the point is, once you do that, you might as well, you're, you're killing whatever, where I was getting here is, is that, look, I, I was in sports in, in high school and uh, I, I know a lot of sports people and when it, the, the, the lesbian community is, there's a lot of them in female sports, right? Has been for a long time. It's not, it's not a big secret. And you are, you are the, that group, you are going to wipe out if you keep going down the way you're going. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's at that point, you might as well. Uh, and they can't. I, I feel so bad for them because the, the lesbian community can't say anything. It's a rock and a hard place. Right. Yeah. They, because... they can't say anything. It's like, well, we are family and we can't we're under the same banner, so we can't go against them. But at the meantime, it's like, oh, yeah, well, there goes your trophy. There goes your your marathon it goes your powerlifting and, and all this. And you're letting them do it. And so right. I hope you're ready because it, I think it'll work itself out naturally, honestly. Because once you get to, to a certain point, you're you're basically saying, well, there shouldn't be men and women sports. It should, it should be sports. Yeah. And you know, at that point, most women just won't be in sports. Well, you know, one it's of true. the things I was thinking about is like the men, they want to get into the locker rooms. These tra trans men, trans yeah. men want to get on women's teams and they want to get into women's prisons. But you don't see it the other way around. Right. You don't see women trying to get into men's locker rooms. No. You don't see women trying to get into men's restrooms. No. You don't see them trying to get into prisons. And you don't. You certainly don't see them trying to get into the UFC cage to fight the no. like Francis Ngannou or somebody. No. And again, it's, it's women women item. have such women have such limited opportunities at the professional level. Yes, collegiate, they're all there. High school, they're all there. But at the professional level, um, God, what was Bill Burr's great quote? He said, really, other than um, <laughs> um, UFC fighting, like Gina Carano, you know, you, you know the, yeah. that or, I mean, ice skating, I suppose, is one where, you know, you couldn't probably wouldn't see much of a crossover, hopefully. <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, nobody, yeah, the, there's a reason why, it, look, men invented these sports. And now we're we're at that state where I again I feel bad for the WNBA I feel bad for women's soccer, you know because they just don't get the numbers. Which is again one of Bill Burns' lines, which he's like, "Why didn't why where are all the feminists? Why didn't all the feminists show up in the stands?" You know. Yeah, we, but how funny right? would it be yeah. to watch a hundred and fifty pound <laughs> male figure skater try to lift that two hundred and forty five pound male to female <laughs> transgender yeah. female oh, skater? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Good point. <gasps> So anyway, I think it'll work itself out. The there is backlash right now. There's already documentaries coming out about the um uh, the it, kid mothers talk, and they they share stories. And it will not take long before the transition stories that went horribly. It's already out there. Yeah, have gone right. horribly wrong. Yeah. you know, it's like oh hey, learn from this because it is 
sh- it, I, I don't know. It's horrific. I mean, it, well, it really is. I don't know. This- you bring that up, and, and it's a sad fact that we don't have enough data yet to see to see how it affects all the detransitioners, right? No. That's, that's a brand new thing coming yeah. out. Uh, yeah. So we're not going to see anything to, to substantially document any any yeah. kind of case for at least 20 years. Well, if we, yeah, I, I'm not a big believer that we'll make it that far without some sort of some sort of incident because the the tear down of of the the family structure in America. And by the way, don't the the, the pandemic also affected a lot of families? You know, really put the pressure on families because they had to stay home. Yep. There was there was a that divorce lawyer thing that I was listening to the other day. He goes, he goes, there was an uptick. <laughs> he goes, he goes, p- families that like never had lunch together ever had to do it every freaking day because they never could really leave the house. And he goes, he goes, the, the these groups were not built for that. And so there was a, all this new series of problems. So, oh boy, here we go yeah, in the comment just, section. Uh, comment. Why? What's the comment section? Here we go. Uh, Mark Sargent promised to lead his channel and quit flat earth if he oh, was sent yeah. a photo of curvature of the earth he has received. Yep, the photo. Yep, Dude, yep. we're not even talking flat earth right I now. I know, but uh, but I, I, I'll, I'll address one thing. I mean, I, again, I appreciate the fact that the trolls are now unified against me, and, and that was part of the, part of the plan. <laughs> um, but again, resolve is you know, one of the three things. When anyone emails me, and I usually send me, again, either the 121,000 foot balloon footage which shows it perfectly flat and they say well that's the wrong lens i go okay so my lens is wrong but yours is right or i send the neil degrasse tyson footage where he says that no civilian can see the curvature because you can't get high enough and then i say is neil degrasse tyson wrong and i've had pilots come back oh no neil tyson's absolutely wrong it's like really because he was right a whole bunch about a whole bunch of other things so you're going to cherry pick so neil tyson is right about everything that's astrophysics except for the curvature of the earth that he's he's stone cold dead on wrong he's absolutely wrong or the red bull jump which i love so much which again trolls are listening tell me is the red bull jump footage real is it is it accurate showing this massive curvature of the earth which basically means the whole world is the size of arizona and again that's what neil degrasse tyson was picking on in the first place he says the red bull was absolutely dishonest and i've talked to producers and i say why did you run that red bull jump footage right and you know where it shows this massive curvature is i go you know it that's not where the curvature they were only one hundred thirty thousand feet up he goes he goes yeah but it was a good picture wasn't it <laughs> yes yes it was it was more dramatic and that's the whole point you know you're there to sell stories um the the line from um uh I'll give you a quick one real quick. Clickbait has never died. It, sensationalism had, in news and headlines. There was this wonderful story that I read yesterday from Russia, of all things, RT.com. And they said, Ukraine attacks Mars. It's like, what? Okay, <laughs> clickbait. Absolute clickbait. And you're clicking in and it's like, is it a lie? No, it is not a lie. Why? Because Ukraine is criticizing any American company that's still doing business in Russia including Pepsi and Mars. So therefore, Ukraine is actually attacking Mars. But you don't have to put a picture from Mars attacks as the thumbnail. It's not <laughs> the same freaking thing. Okay, so what it, what was this? I'm sorry, I can't see behind the Red Bull jump has nothing to do with Mark Sargent lying about deleting his channel. Absolutely it does. Absolutely it does. You can't resolve one thing and not the other. You guys can send me as many pics as you want now. It's too late. I had the, <laughs> I had it out there for at least six years. You guys said nothing. And then a couple of troll channels come out. It's like, oh, we're going to send them just any random picture of the earth from Mark, space. I'm going to send you a pic later, buddy. Yeah. Oh, please do. Please do. Oh, it's going to be one of those pics? Is it from your, <laughs> is it from your OnlyFans page? Yeah. Seriously. Salt's it's wide no, underbelly. No, to, to, to Sergeant Rock, and by the way, thank you for having uh, your first name is my last name. Uh, which is, tell me, is Neil deGrasse Tyson, the world's most famous scientist, is he wrong? When he said, point blank, that no civilian can see the curvature because they can't get high enough. Even at 100, even the Red Bull jump, which was Would what you be about. willing to take a phone call from this gentleman if he is so Dude, you don't want to put so. him on. It's, okay. You do not want to put, you don't, you're not going to troll on this channel. It's going to end horribly. No, uh, no, it'd be like, funny. no he, he can email me directly. He can make content like anyone else. I, I don't, I don't um, debate garden variety trolls. Wait, so just, didn't Degrassi Tyson just hey, kind of here we go. Mind he's he's going to keep, he's going to keep going with this. You promised to quit your channel as soon as what? As soon as some anybody sent me any photos from an airline, it's too late. 
It's absolutely true. Also, Neil deGrasse Tyson has nothing to do with your promise. Oh, it absolutely does. Now he's afraid. I emailed, but he blocked. How did I block him? I blocked you from what? <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Yeah, it's, uh, Neil deGrasse come out and say something. Um, he be, he's all for the transgender, and he was there was some Dude, video. Yes, he did. Yeah. He yeah, he kind of looked, like, looked wait, a little wait. bit like, and it was late in the game. I was so disappointed because I have used. He has helped us more than he's hurt us, and he came mm -hmm. out, and yeah, he was defending it. And well, it was mostly because he's got a relative that's, um, and you okay. know, usually it's he's got he's got a family member that's that's trans, and okay. that's usually what happens. Although and then you got a guy like Elon Musk who's got a trans son, and he's kind of staying. He's he's against it. He tries to play both sides of the fence, which is why one of the reasons I, I dislike that man so much, because he he tries to he tries to play both sides. Okay, you know, he tries to say you know Tucker's right sometimes. Why do you keep posting this? Mark made a promise. Wow, you're just going to keep saying that over and over and over. Great. Hey, by the way, every time and this is one of the reasons why I don't read comments very much is every time, and I've said this for eight years, every time a troll hits my channel, you're just adding to the metrics. You are shooting wooden <laughs> arrows into a bonfire. From a distance, it looks like you're doing something. All you're doing is adding to the metrics. So please, I people, there was a guy that says, he's like, oh, hey, can I be a moderator on your channel? And I said, are you kidding? I The, the trolls, I go, I'd love a hundred more like them. <laughs> I, I, this guy I, it was one of my complaints in the speeches I've been doing for two years. I go, it's not the problem that I have trolls. It's not. It's that I don't have good trolls. We the, the Flyers community as a whole, we do not have the the best trolls in the world. We don't have any celebrity trolls right now. Uh, Joe Rogan yeah. tried for a little bit, didn't work. The metric says nothing to do with you lying. He's just going to keep doing this over yeah, and over. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Go go over ahead. It's entertaining. Over. Please, Pretty please, big, by all right? means, keep keep hammering on it, man. It's, it's not entertaining going for me. Work. Rogan was pretty hot on that, right? He doesn't. Now he believes a lot of stuff, but he. Okay, here's the Joe Rogan. Here's the Joe Rogan and... story, really fast. So Joe Rogan, uh, before the flatter thing happened, he was. You, you remember Joe Rogan's career? You're old enough to remember when he was on right, news, yeah. ra news yeah. radio back in the day. You know the character mm -hmm. he played back on news radio? He was the conspiracy guy, right? He okay. was the guy. He was the guy that came in. It was like, dude. There's all sorts of weird government stuff happening. He was always on that path. And I think that got into his head and he went down rabbit holes for real. And um, I think it was the weed. Yeah, it could have been the weed. <laughs> well, I don't know how much weed he was doing back then. Um, remember, this was pre-everything. So he, he, did, he did a, um, a number of podcasts. And one he was going after against NASA. And in, if you know debate, in a, in a debate, both sides being equal, the person with the most passion usually wins, right? The most conviction. They just come off as like they believe it more. And he was destroying NASA people. Now, he, he knew nothing about Flat Earth, but he was saying, we absolutely did not go to the moon. The moon was absolutely, was, there's so many things wrong with the moon. And I think they got to him pretty quick because he went dark for almost a year. And when he came out, he had a brand new show on the sci-fi network called Joe Rogan questions everything. And yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Episode yeah. one, he apologized for everything bad he ever, ever said about NASA. And then shortly mm -hmm. after that, then he starts getting to other TV gigs, you know, he did the man show and then UFC stuff. And then of course they always took care of him. I mean, come on, he's got the number one podcast in the world. I understand he's got a certain demographic group, but the number one podcast in the world. So, but, but when he, but he absolutely, criticized flat earth on a regular basis and he would bring it up to guests and i knew what was happening it was in his head and he'd love to bring it up but he couldn't officially bring it up so he used he went vicariously through eddie bravo and uh and tried to <laughs> trigger a number of guests guy, right the what is it bravo is a big conspiracy guy <clears throat> oh like, huge conspiracy right, okay. huge. in fact eddie bravo was what got us on uh the alex jones show uh, okay. Eddie Bra David Weiss was talking to Alex Jones via Skype, and Eddie Bravo was sitting right next to Alex Jones, high as a freaking kite, just making sure that Alex wouldn't wouldn't get off track. It was great listening to him because, <laughs> like, like Alex would like try to do that, rah, 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 you know, and then yeah. and Eddie would like elbow and be like, "No, man, listen Wait to David. He's, Wait a minute, he's, he's dropping some knowledge on you." Right? <laughs> are you awful. trying to tell me, are you trying to convince me? It's bad enough flat earth, all right? What? Are you trying to convince me that every Eddie Bravo was high? <laughs> I just don't one, believe that. One, yeah, one, you cannot hang out with Joe Rogan as a best friend for, <laughs> for that long without getting that high. 
but oh, I'm oh, sorry. One more thing. And at one point, okay, here's where it peaked out with Joe Rogan. He tried to get a debate, uh, uh, and because Eddie Bravo is a huge Eric Debay fan, um, and if you're an Eric Debay fan, then you're against everybody else, right? For the most part. So, so Joe, he convinced Joe, and and Neil Tyson was on the show, and he said, "Hey, Neil Tyson, I'd love you to debate Eric Debay." on this show if if i bring in eric will you debate him and and neil tyson played it perfectly he, he just said oh yeah absolutely we'll make that happen right yeah nod wink okay right? no he was never um <laughs> neil tyson has never debated anyone in his life and he's not going to that's not his specialty he is a he never debated with him at all nobody's debated with him okay he doesn't debate he that's not his thing he goes up on stage and i'm not i'm not racial profiling or anything he is a cross between sinbad and cosby Right, he he's he's got a great stage presence. He's got a great sense of humor, and he's got you know a quick. He's he's quick, so he can he does the whole song and dance. He's like a like a science jack in the box, you know. Dun, 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 you know, space is amazing, right. you know, and 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 it, and it works. It works really really well. He could and it's just dumb luck. He could have been. Hold a, on, Mark. Hold on, Mark. Sergeant Rock, please don't leave. I, I was so entertained. Why, what you going going why do you lie? Why do you lie? Always going live. Going right live. Now, so. uh, Mark is a liar. Oh, hey, okay. great. Have, have fun with that. Well, well don't leave because it's so entertaining with the same sentence. Oh, over I, and over I, again. I, again, I don't mind. It, this was. It doesn't bother me because, look, I was. I got tired. It was the same reason why I got rid. I, I probably should have gotten rid of the airplane challenge because nobody ever took a, me up on it until until this year. Um, the other challenge I threw out there was the uh, the vacuum chamber test, which was people because I tried to explain to people like, look, the spacesuit doesn't work. It can't work. It defies physics. I go out to prove it. I will, you know, loan me a spacesuit, put me in a university vacuum chamber with another person, hopefully. Otherwise, I might die <laughs> by myself and pull the switch. Tell me how I survive. And I put that out there for like four years, five years. Nobody even entertained it. Why would you? Uh, to, no scientist to this day, including Sergeant Rock, by the way, I know your vocabulary is limited, but tell me, <laughs> Sergeant Rock, for example, um, what magical thing in the backpack of a spacesuit allows it to counteract the vacuum of space? Tell, tell me why a spacesuit doesn't turn into a parade float into the, the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man and then blow up. Tell me how that, that doesn't happen. No, no scientist will address it because they're, and look, I'm a fairly clever guy. I can't even think from a fictional standpoint how to do it, how I would even try to, you know, even, even if we had the technology now, but you're saying we did this with analog in 69. No, no, no. Well, it's I, clearly the flux capacitor. <laughs> yeah. We could use the flux capacitor, clearly. but yeah, in 69, come on. We had, we had zero tech in 69. We had terrible tech. It was awful. We had nothing. We didn't even have dial up modems. Listen, uh, you know, Sergeant Rock, do what you got to do, my friend. Uh, I don't want to derail you from what we were talking about, Mark. So we'll just let Sergeant Rock go live and he can I, do what I, he got to do. I don't know who he is. Hey, great first name, though. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely love it. Well, no, no, because that would be used to that. Mark, I mean, you, you've got to be used to that. Right? I mean, at this oh, point, no, no. Troll, it's pretty controversial. Tro I mean, well, are you kidding? Trolls came at me immediately back in 2015 oh you can imagine right you're you're coming on the internet nobody's talking about it. it's like oh yeah by the way i think the earth is flat oh my god you could i mean the 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 the, the comment sections are just deep with all sorts and and i don't blame them because everybody starts out in the in the in the hole everybody hates flat earth when they when they first get into it i hated it everybody know all the speakers that are on the the conference that we're doing in october um, in Vegas, all, all those people hated it. Hell, David Weiss, for example, you know, one of our one of our heavy heavy interviewers, he would ban people from chat, lifetime bans, if they even brought it up. Huh. And they kept bringing it up, and finally, one of his friends said, "Hey, have you ever looked into?" And he's like, "Not you too." And and then finally, he started, you know, looking into it, and now you know he's one of the most prolific video makers that is out there. So. But yeah. yeah, and I, I actually before the show, I pulled up a couple YouTube videos of you at conferences yeah. and people. So you seem to get a lot of that. You get a lot of trolls. You get a lot of people. You know, if you're doing I, a, speed. I do, I I do, but I don't mind because, in fact, I'll give you a, a quick example. I was doing an interview um, with a guy down at a New Zealand conference that we did some years ago, and he put me in the hot sun. This was like a like an Alex Jones of New Zealand. And he was grilling me in the hot sun. He was sitting in the shade and I was sitting in the sun deliberately for 40 right. minutes, right? And 
<clears throat> after a while, he he tells the cameras to stop, right? And this is you know it's a fairly big production. And uh, he goes, look, he goes, I'm hitting you with everything I've got. I'm being insulting. I'm using profanity. You're cooking out here. I'm not even offering you water. He's going, what the hell? He goes, why can't I get you to uh, to break character? And I go, because it's not a character. It's not an act. And I go, and I go, and I can't get mad because I used to be you. Five years ago, I was you. So what, it would be hypocritical for me to to go after trolls and and yell at them and and give them too hard of a time because I was on that side of the fence. I absolutely would make make fun of it. The the line I used from I know we got to wrap this up pretty soon. What but, but there's a line I used in the in the first flat earth clues, which is I had friends back in 2015 that swore that the entire royal family was made out of lizard people, right? And I would go to them and it's like, yeah, but what about this flat earth thing? And they go, get the hell out of here. It's like, what are you talking about? You just told me lizard people, right? That's that's not wild. Flat earth, that's absolutely wild. And and, and that's when I knew the scope of this thing. This thing was bigger than than every other, all other conspiracies combined because it's the only thing we, we debunked to children. So I get it. I get it. So I don't yeah, mind. Yeah. Com comment sections and people, no, I don't mind. Yeah, and I mean, to your credit, you you've got a lot of points. I mean, you make a lot of good arguments. Um, well, I, there's I, there's still a part of me, you know, and I think we talked about this last time that every it, everything in your own time, man. I'm again, I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here to persuade you. Right? Yeah. yeah right. I'm just here to put put the idea in your head, and you have to resolve it for yourself. The the most unsatisfying thing of being in our community is that. When you want people to change, you know, when when you want that that flip, that light switch, you're never going to get it when you want it to, which is why, you know, the holidays are going to be coming up eventually. And I have to warn people every single year. I say, don't do it. I know what you want to do. You're going to go home. You're going to sit over a Christmas ham or whatever it is or Thanksgiving. And people say, hey, Fred, <laughs> what have you been up to lately? And you're going to want to say, let me tell you what I've been into, man. I've been in flat earth. <laughs> Absolutely do not do that okay. at a dinner table. People because they the 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 curse of our of our community is when that light switch happens, you forget the entire hero's journey that took to get you there. And you think, oh, you know what? I could absolutely convince my cousin over a cup of coffee. In fact, I'm gonna give it a shot. That there's this optimism that comes over you, and I have to remind it's like, don't, don't, just don't. <laughs> It'll be a okay. Terrible Terrible idea. So you brought up the holidays. I want to believe that Santa Claus is real. What's what's oh, it? <laughs> that's a nice. It's a nice idea. Santa Claus. Okay. Do you want you want to know how this will this will tug at your heart a bit? You know how <laughs> I found out about Santa Claus, <laughs> or how how that like wrecked for me, is I was home. It was in January and the snow was still on the ground, and I was rooting around. You know how you know when you're young, you're a kid, you you go through your parents some. Um, your parents' drawers and stuff like that. Oh, you yeah, look for yeah. you know, just like, is there any what I'm bored. There's nothing happening, right? It was the 70s on top of it. And I look <laughs> in, in my mom's like one of the drawers in her dresser, and I found in a little I rubber banded marshal the letters, <laughs> the letters I had sent to Santa. <laughs> they were all in this little bundle. And it's oh, like Oh yeah. And that happened like, to me. Same and, thing. And, yeah, and it's like, wait, if the letters are still here. He didn't get the, and then, you know, it hits you. It's like, wait a minute. <laughs> what, what, what happened, right? And then I set the house on fire and well, you know. that. Yeah, you know, there you go. Went, That's the one I wish was, I, I really wish, uh, because when I had to tell my kids. Yeah. That's a, that's a heartbreaker. I wish that Santa did exist because it's like, you know, what oh, no, like I, switch greater. I love the story. I love the fact, you know, one of the, it's one of the few fake media things that I love to this day. And the media won't wreck it. For you right i will say there's some rules out there one rule in particular but you know it every year and some some really push it which is um uh so many news stations local news stations have santa radar right yeah, yeah. And they do it at a specific time fairly fairly early when the kids should be in bed if you want them to get into bed so you can you know do all the tree stuff and you it, and they warn you ahead of time so you can get the kids around the television and uh, and of course, America took it far, too far. There was a few years ago where I think CNN did this animation, and they brought in the freaking Pentagon, and apparently Santa was getting escorted by F-16s, <laughs> the whole right. nine yards. They had this animation with like this, yeah, this squadrons of yeah. fighters that are. It's like, of course, America would would hijack this. Yeah. So uh, your.
favorite troll of the night, Sergeant Rock, is actually gone live. I'm looking at his channel. Oh, cool. He's, How many subs uh, does he have? Uh, I don't know, 648, but he's got this up and he's talking about us, and I think it's wonderful. Um, <laughs> for for your trolls, Why not? I just want to say, uh, I don't believe what Mark believes, but I believe in having civil and decent conversation. Yeah. So, um, yeah. And again, and it's it, fun. It is, it is. And what I try to tell people is like, look, um, one of your and I, i'm stealing from a movie here one of your only freedoms that you have out there is figuring out things for yourself and fit you know deciding for yourself no don't take everything that's out there that's put out there at face value i know that you know in the truman show line is very very true which is we believe that the world what the world is presenting to us and uh the media <laughs> Don't forget, the media is controlled by parent companies, which are controlled by bigger parent companies. And they have an agenda. The objective media, I don't know if it's ever really existed. Uh, so figure, just because you see something or hear something, do your own research, ask questions. Don't believe I agree it. with that, 100%. Yeah, yeah, agreed. Now, you've done all the research. We've talked about that before. Obviously, you you feel that you're right. I do. You mentioned 2015. Is that when it sunk in? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Again, I, I looked into it. I, and again, I love pop culture references. I looked at it in 2014 and, uh, and tried to debunk it for nine months. Everybody tries to debunk it. The t-shirt literally reads, I became a flat earther because I tried to debunk it. If you try to debunk it, you're screwed because you will never, you'll never get it out of your head. It'll be like a marble in a paint can. And at the beginning of 2015, I had that Jerry Maguire moment, sports movie, folks, mm -hmm. where I woke up. You know, for him, it was like, you know, not not more clients, less clients. And for me, it was like a woke up. It's like, wait a minute, I'm going about this all wrong. I shouldn't be trying to debunk it. I should be going, I should let the internet do the work for me. So I'm going to say that it is, and I'm going to let the internet hive mind, see if they can poke holes in it. And but but I had been already trying to debunk it for nine months, and and so it was really like I was try I was daring the internet to find a, a um, an angle that I hadn't thought of, and the, and I thought for sure, honestly, I really thought God is my witness, I thought some some guy with a master's degree or a PhD from university would call me up. It's like okay, here's where you went wrong, blah blah blah. You didn't carry the two or whatever it is. Yeah. And, and, and and that's it. You can shut down your YouTube channel. I'd be like, oh, thank God, I can go back to to playing Warcraft. And um, <laughs> and that and I thought that's what, how it would go, and it didn't. Uh, it, it went the other way, where all of a sudden all these people started coming out of the freaking woodwork. I mean, all these all uh, subject matter experts, you know, um, structural engineers and air traffic controllers, um, every branch in the military, pilots, um, you, you name it. Everybody that fired everything, by the way, that whole sniper thing. It's like, oh, took account of the curvature of the earth. No, I've talked to every master gunners and everybody in between, and they all say the same thing. It's like, oh, yeah, we've heard of the curvature. We've heard of the spin. We don't use it. And this just kept piling on each other to where within six months, by the, by the time 2015 ended, I was like, oh, no, I'm, I'm completely in. Any reservations I had left. Uh, I don't have, uh, and again, most of it was, and then everyone started picking on NASA, and then it was, then it was pretty easy. So, there you well, go. Hey, Mark, we've we've been at this for two hours now. Yeah, um, probably, well, probably probably if you time have any to wrap lingering it up. questions. You might want to. Yeah. Well, yeah, I I really appreciate you coming on once again, man. Uh, I, conversations are always fascinating. It's always fun. Yeah. Um, you're a smart dude. You're respectful, and that's oh, what I really I appreciate about, about you. Well, thank you. I didn't by say the anything way. about your looks. <laughs> I wasn't going to go there. Yeah, I know. By the way, I had to get used to the fact that uh, people wanted to do stuff on camera. I the first first fifty interviews. I don't think I was on much video. I just don't like mm. myself on camera. Um, are you hang out with enough field producers, for example, and you start to figure stuff out. You know, they uh, you 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 know what the whole it factor is in various things. And like when all producers, when every producer you run into says, "Yeah, wear a hat," <laughs> it's like, "Yep." <laughs> <laughs> Where that? Like, My family. Like, this time you got the whole background going, which is well. You know. And by the way, I didn't. I didn't even build this. That's the other side. Not, not to go off on a, a quick little thing. I, if I ever live to write uh, my autobiography, which I don't know if I will, because I don't know if it matters, because I've lived a weird, charmed life. It would be called unsolicited. 
because people just started sending me stuff like this background. David Weiss made that because he didn't like the the stuff I had done, the, like my previous thing. <laughs> the, the whole reason like Jaronism made his channel, which was very successful, was because he watched my videos and he didn't like the video editing that I did. He goes, well, if this guy can make a successful channel, I certainly can. And he went <laughs> to like the secondhand store, literally went to a thrift store and bought a, a, like a worn out copy of Visual Studio 12. <laughs> For like six dollars, went home and started making better videos than me. It's and hilarious. Like I, yeah, and and that sort of stuff happens all the time. And I never had to pick up a phone for, to to do stuff. You know, like a my publisher out in in London. She calls me up. And she goes, "Hey, you know, can I you want you want to write a book on this?" I go, "Sure." What do I have to do? She goes, "Well, send me the transcripts of the clues." I go, "Okay, sure." And I, I mean, other producers' things don't work out, but but I didn't have to. Or you know, the Australian thing where um. They said, how would you like to do a mobile commercial in Australia? It's like, sure. They, Can you be here in two weeks? It's like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> sure, why not? I've never been to Australia before. Why the hell not? So, That's awesome. Yeah. So anyway, it's, it's, been a, it's been a hell of a journey, but I, I wouldn't trade it. I, I wouldn't change a thing. I think it's been a lot of fun. Good. So, yeah. Well, I, I'm sure Ryan will agree with me, but I'd like to offer you an open invitation at any time you want to come on okay. the show. Thanks. Uh, we, can, we can talk about sports. It. Yeah, yeah we talk about whatever, thinking. man. It's got to be sports next time. We'll just talk about sports. <laughs> as long as you bring your trolls, we'll be okay. Oh, good lord, the trolls! Yeah, we'll the get more, we'll get way, more comments is, for sports. Probably we'll get all kinds of negative. This is the one at me and my Chiefs winning. Oh, don't don't start. Um, the uh, this one of the, by the way that reminds me of what was that commercial where the 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 guy that draws the lines on the on the field he he did the man. chef the, called it the chefs. Remember that Here's commercial a guy. from years ago. And and it was like so it wasn't Chiefs in the end zone. He spelled it wrong. He left out the I. And it's like it was, it was, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And he goes yeah. and the guy looks at the line guy. Goes, Who's the chef? And he looks down. He goes, Great googly moogly. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah, so people were already gone in the stands, and it was like, oh crap, it's <laughs> gross. Um, no, no. Here, here's right, a guy right. who needs spell check. Let me, let me. Two, two things real fast. Uh, one is thank you to the um, the the troll that's. This, that doesn't happen to me very often where they're actually piggybacking off a, a stream that's happening where there's a troll streaming a thing that I'm that I'm doing. So, hey, great. Good for you. Um, the other thing is. Um, uh, uh, crap. Oh, yeah. If you want to find me, you don't have to, you know, just go. I'll make it easy for you. Uh, just go into any search engine, type in Flat Earth Mark. That's it. And you will eventually find the rabbit hole that leads to wherever. I believe in fate. So it's going to take <laughs> you somewhere. Okay. I don't know where it's going to take you, but it's going to, you'll find, you'll find my stuff. And, and the, the community is so huge that, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're curious, if you guys are in it, and by the way, any trolls that want to, that want to visit the, um, the, the, our big event now that the mandates are all gone, we're, we're our big conference is going to be in Las Vegas on October 21st, 22nd. And I am opening. So what, excellent. What, how yeah. big is your group? Mark, like, oh, good lord, man, it's huge, it's absolutely okay. freaking huge. Um, huge. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's, no, it's millions of people. I'm not, I'm not yeah. exaggerating when I say that. We have a massive, massive number of people out there, but the problem is that 90% of them are in the closet. In fact, that's part of my speech for this year, which is all your top flat earth channels, for example, are barely crack six figures in on YouTube, right? But if you go into YouTube and you type in flat earth and you sort by view count. Every major channel in YouTube, except for like movie reactions, has done a flat earth video because they know it generates hits. But so you've got it's it's this weird secret army that's out there because you they, they're into flat earth, but they don't want to admit it. And I'll give you the last thing before I go, which is I kind of equate it. And you guys are old enough to remember this. It was kind of, it's a steal. It's a little rip off of, of Chris Rock joke, which is it's kind of like the Spice Girls. Which is Spice Girls is the most popular female band in the history of, of anything, right? I have yet to meet anyone that has eaten, has owned the album, has ever played the album where I have been at their house, <laughs> right. and yet they have sold millions and millions of copies and they had two blockbuster movies. So, I actually knew a, knew a person that it was a guy too that had oh, that wow, album. Oh, really? See, yeah, you're, yeah. you're one of the first people that it's like, <laughs> he also hilarious. had. Um... What was the other band? New kid, not New Kids on the Block. Uh, Instinct. Instinct. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Backdoor Boys. Backdoor Boys. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 
You yeah, so he was like, that guy. Oh, whoops. Yeah. Said that yeah, yeah, the boy bands. is Yeah, and by the way, all the boy bands stole from Menudo, you know, the, the Mexican. Oh, right. hell yeah, yeah they I did. Menudo, yeah, yeah. They, they figured yeah. out that formula. That was genius. By the way, the American producers is like, oh, my God, we get a a, a boy of every, every bad boy yeah. type you could imagine. Clean cut and bad, you know, dirty and bad. And we put them all on stage, and the girls are going to be drawn to one of them. So they're all going to buy the album. They're all going to go to the concerts. Brilliant. Did you watch that documentary on HBO? On Menudo? Yeah. Oh, no, I want to, though. There's a good documentary on it. It's it's pretty interesting because okay. it's... Yeah, it covers it pretty deeply, and it yeah. kind of explains what you were talking about. Yeah, America, again, we steal, we steal only the best stuff. <laughs> we sure That's do. Right. We do. That's we right. make it ours. We invented all that crap. Whatever. Mark, once again, dude, thank you so much. Thank it's you. been a pleasure. Appreciate it's been it. fun. And uh, let's do it again sometime. All right, man. Thank you. Thank you. Send me the audio when you can. Hey, buy S. S what was his name? SGT, what? Sergeant, what? Sergeant Rock. Sergeant Rock. Oh, my God. I shouldn't make fun because Sergeant Rock was one of my early favorite comic books. Ah, whatever. Yeah. I also I also own a comic book shop back in the day. So, Sergeant Rock, hey, great name. Hey, well, since you brought that up. Yeah. What is your take on the new comic book movies falling apart? Like the like the big it was going to run it. It was going to run its course. In fact, if you want, sorry, I not to draw this out. Um, if you want to watch, my opinion mirrors the opinion of a wonderful movie reviewer called the Critical Drinker. Oh, I love him. Yeah, from Scotland. Oh, yeah. His, last, his last thing that he did, which was basically said the end of hero movies. You know, the, which he goes into it, and it was it's a number of factors, but really the short version is, it's run its course. We've yeah. done it. We've done everything in the comic book world that we could possibly do. Uh, and and what we didn't do in the movie industry, we did with The Boys. You know, the yeah. the, mm -hmm. the, the Amazon yeah. series, which yeah. it goes in. There's a whole bunch of books I could talk about that one, which is really delves into the real superhero aspect of it, which yeah, is, you know. That's a good show, right? Do you like that show? I mean, as, as a. With The Boys? Yeah. Well, remember, I'm I'm a big, com I'm a big comic book fan, so right. I. You, I, I came from the world where uh, there was uh, books like Stormwatch and Planetary and The Authority where superheroes weren't nice. They weren't. Mm -hmm. I mean, when power corrupts and with superheroes, there was a wonderful story. Again, last thing, I swear to God. The, the look up, <laughs> if you want to look up, look up The Authority or Planetary, uh, wonderful books, where they, there was a story where basically the first superhero group that shows up wins. And in their yeah. one of the universes, the Fantastic Four showed up first. They were the ones, and they made sure any other superhero that showed up dead. Okay. <laughs> they they wow. they ran everything That's at the highest do, level, right? And, and they killed <laughs> they killed Superman in his crib. They wiped out Wonder Woman's island. You know, Batman. You know, the Flash. They dissected and stole his powers. I mean, it, again, it's, there's a ruthlessness to it. There's a naive sense in comic books, which is, oh, you know, Batman sent him to jail. Right, yeah. and he never yeah. used guns, and Superman never used his laser vision, his heat vision, and incinerated people. Right? right. Like, nope, nope, that's not really how it would go. <laughs> so the the boy was, was is is it really gritty and really? It's not yeah, for everybody. Really no, no, it's not. Have shiny you seen and happy. Baby? the boys? I stopped that? watching it when I saw the dude crawl up the other dude's penis and explode. Oh, yeah. That's, oh, you, know what part, no. you know what part of no. that was, unfortunately? That was part that Seth Rogen was a producer of that show, where you could tell he was sitting in on some meetings like, you know what would be great? <laughs> you know what? I want to offer you something. Yeah. Let's get you on the podcast next time, and let's not talk any flat okay. earth. Let's talk comics. Let's talk sports. Okay. Let's talk whatever Mark All started. Right, I'm out of here. Get Go away. <laughs> All right. See you, See you. Bye. Bye. Hey. Hello, DC. Hello, Mickey.